Hello, friends. Today's episode is brought to you by From Within Records. Saturday, May 18th, the one scene unites in the panhandle From Within Records Spring 2024 Showcase. Magnitude, Mouse at the Palace, Seat of Pain, Envision, Worn, Collateral, Dimension 6, Statement of Pride, Burning Strong, and Milestone. This will all be taking place at the Handlebar. Tickets are available now. Grab one before it's too late. Also, coming soon, Dimension 6, 12-inch, and Debut 7-inch by Lead Spirit. So please look forward to that. Also, very exciting news. In the city of Rancho Cucamonga, Friday, May 24th, Statement of Pride will be making their way all the way to California. They'll be playing with Gorilla Biscuits, Berthold City, Firestarter, and Major Pain. That's going to be an awesome one. I'm very much looking forward to that. If you're not following From Within Records on social media, please go boot up your Twitter, your Instagram, click that follow button to stay up to date on all the current news. And like I always say, please support From Within Records because they support us. If you're looking for high quality merch for your band or for your business, please hit up my friends over at Good Fortune Printing out of Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. You can follow them on Instagram at Good Fortune Printing, or if you want to get in contact with them, please email them contact at goodfortuneprinting.com. You can thank me later. Wow, I am so excited for this week. But before we get into today's guest, I just cannot get over uh, the past couple of weeks for K pop, right? Here's my K pop rant. Um, I got to see New Jeans, which was not as exciting as I thought it would be. Uh, maybe because we would have preferred to have seen an actual concert, like all respect to the award show, but. I'd never really been to anything like that. Not really my thing. Uh, Glad I got to experience it, but uh, that was fun, but not as fun as I thought it would be. And then fast forward to Ive, which was the, like the biggest surprise. I was trying to downplay the concert because I wasn't sure if I was going to go. But last minute, uh, shout out to the homie Ben. Ben reached out, uh, got tickets, and we went. And that was seriously a- an amazing time. It made me realize that uh, Ive is definitely top ten in my book. They're they're awesome. They put on an amazing show. Their catalog is so good. And so many bangers from from start to finish. So many bangers. It was it, it was a really good night at the forum and twice making their only U.S. Uh, concert in 2024, which is insane because they've been on this uh, this insane run. But to play their only concert in 2024, that was a little sad, but also um, happy for them. They they, they needed some uh, a, a much needed vacation, and hopefully they come back even stronger. Uh, obviously, they just released new music not too long ago, and it did really well. So I hope that they get a break because they definitely need it. They've been nonstop for so long, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing them. Uh, hopefully, when I go to Korea, that that's like the the dream, right? When I go to Korea later this year, maybe uh, they'll be doing something. But if not, for sure, 2025 is going to be insane because uh, just the return of so many big groups, and I'm just uh, blown away. But also, we're only three months into the year, and I I cannot believe the experiences I've had with K-pop already, uh, but there's just uh, more things on the horizon. Uh, We're waiting for uh, Coachella, which is probably the next big thing. Uh, KCON needs to get announced. Weekly still out there. Uh, Secret Numbers doing a survey on where they should play uh, in the U.S. So, uh, you know, they're on their way. There's just a ton of cool stuff. And I cannot believe it's only March. It's only going to get crazier. But uh, go listen to K-pop. It's awesome. It's fun. But on today's episode, we had to track down our good friend, Tyler Short. Uh, He's a reoccurring guest. He's a good friend of mine. I'm actually traveling to uh, visit him uh, in a couple days. I will be in Louisville for LDB. I'm happy that I'm finally able to make good on this promise. I 
have told Tyler for the past three years that I was going to go, but with scheduling and stuff, it, it just didn't work out. But uh, this year it did, and I'm excited. So I'm, I'm happy to finally be able to make it out there and experience the fest. Amazing lineup. I'm happy to be able to see bands that I've never seen before. I, I'm most excited for Two Witnesses, uh, bands like Balmora, but then also, uh, you know, Koyo's on the list. Uh, so many awesome bands, Pain of Truth. Uh, missing link so I, i'm very much looking forward to the festivities this upcoming weekend but i had to track down tyler we broke down season two of what if and this is just uh just a you know a, a good light on on the mcu i i know it hasn't been the brightest as of late but you know tyler and i were we're gonna see this thing to the end you know for all the good for all the bad and for everything we're, we're not gonna uh, turn our backs on the the mcu it, it, it's a a very interesting ride that we've been on and it's been going on for so long so that there's no way we can uh turn our backs on it but i think things are about to take a turn for uh the better right uh, if what if season two was any indicator but also with uh, deadpool 2 on its way and that's the only MCU uh, movie that we're getting this year, which is insane because right they've been flushing them out like crazy over the past couple of years. So for us to only get one in 2024, very interesting. But I feel like they're making a statement with that one, and I cannot wait because if you've not seen the trailer at this point, please go hit pause, go watch the trailer. It's awesome. It's fun. So many crazy things going on in it, and I'm very much looking forward to the movie later this year. But do that come back here and i, I hope you, you all of you watched uh what if season two or hopefully listen to this will inspire you to watch season two because those stories are so fun and so off the wall and i think a lot of them cannot be told um on like the big screen so it's cool that we're able to get them uh you know in this animated version so go watch that or do that or watch it after the podcast because it, it, it's highly recommended. But it was such an awesome time for me to sit down with Tyler. I could literally talk to him for forever because uh, he's just uh, fun and entertaining and very interesting. Love Tyler. I'm happy that he's always down to do these with me. Some of my most favorite podcasts. So please strap in. Enjoy this conversation. Without further ado, welcome Tyler Short to the show. Recording. Welcome back, Tyler Short, to the podcast. What's up, buddy? Um, I uh, I'm exhausted right now, but I'm really excited to talk to you for however long this takes. <laughs> okay, exhausted, and is that because of like travel? Because I know you were just in New York, or you got other stuff going on. Yeah, I haven't gotten like a really good night's sleep until last night, and it almost made me just more tired. <laughs> Yeah, that that that's strange how that happens because I I run on like a really weird sleep schedule, so th there'll be times where I'm like, all right, here we go. Like I got no obligations tomorrow. Like let's just catch up on some sleep, and then you wake up. It's not real. Yeah, <laughs> catching up on sleep is a myth. <laughs> yeah, because I I think I've missed so many hours of sleep at, at this point. It's like like a little late for me to play catch up. Yeah, you'll sleep in your dead. It's fine. Yeah. Or if maybe I'll live long enough to not die. I'll live forever. I don't think that's going to happen for us. I don't think we're, we're wealthy enough for that one. In the cloud. I'm, I'm going to just, uh, you know, just upload my brain somewhere. Maybe. I can't remember who I was when I was up in New York that I was talking to. It was uh, it was Chad, our buddy Chad from Perfect World. Okay um we were talking about because he's got like the apple vision pro and okay. like, apparently buys every um 
every uh, like new technology that comes out. And we were talking about wealthy people living forever, uploading their consciousness to uh, to like AI or to uh, different um, memory banks and whatnot and having the discussion of what is a soul. <laughs> yeah, I trip out when people talk about the Vision Pro and they don't realize that it's like um, uh, like it, it's not like full on like VR. It's like, you know, like augmented reality because you can yeah. see you, you can still see like what's going on around you because I, I've, I've heard people talk about it and, uh, you know, and clearly they don't know what they're talking about because they're they're talking as if as if you can't see what's going on around you. And I'm like, I don't think they understand like what those are because I'm, I'm guessing they're just like lumping it into like the the meta quest and uh, the Oculus yeah. stuff like that. But no, it's like, uh, you know, yeah, obviously the same family, see, but I can even see like a, uh, like a function for it for like people who travel and need like to be able to have a computer and like multiple screens and different kinds of things like that for their jobs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I do think that for the most part, unless you're buying like the highest memory, version of it it's it's all it's all posterity and vanity having shit like that it's just toys it's just it's just toys this is adult toys mm -hmm. yeah people should stop pretending like these things are people should stop pretending like um all this new technology is to like make your life easier and also stop pretending like guns are to make you safer they're toys they're all toys and it's okay it's cool just tell us they're toys just don't act like it's 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 enhancing your life like it's it's streamlining your life it's making everything so much easier and better or you feel so much safer and everything's all 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 good just say i want to have fun with my toys yeah i and, I, and I, i'm cool with that out of like all like the reviews and stuff like i uh, get reminded of uh, casey neistat are, are you familiar with him famous uh, you know filmmaker from new york i don't uh, know I'm sure if you saw him, you would recognize him. But anyways, he uh, did a video on the Vision Pro and he said, this is awesome. It's not for everybody, but just wait till like Vision Pro 11 where they actually got it like, you know, down where you don't got some weird cord dangling because, you know, that's how it has to get its power, which I agree because yes. that's that's not something I could deal with having to have this long cord in a battery uh, you know, bank uh, in my back pocket. That was honestly one of the things that um, oh, is the guy who directed Project Power. Um, yeah, uh, that was one of the things Chad said is like he wanted it because he wanted to have the worst version of it that ever will exist. Mm -hmm. He was like, this is as bad as it'll be. And it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the technology is is awesome. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've, I've seen all the gripes. Oh, like it scans your eyes. I don't want it scanning my eyes but yeah it, like dog you're getting your can your face scanned every time you leave your house <laughs> yeah yeah like i i, I feel like um like the like sense of security or privacy that we have is like you know i, I don't think people realize like you know that it's not really there these days it's not existent. Yeah. yeah now people can see what you're doing at all times most mo like unless you're using a VPN and every single one of your uh, conversations is going through like end to end encryption on closed networks and whatnot. Anyone can find out what you're saying if they want to enough, especially like rooms full of people in India whose job it is to do that. <laughs> yeah. And, it, you know, if a guy like Jeff Bezos can get got with a, you know, um, with a, uh, I forgot what the program was called that he, he got sent that that link to his phone and that's how they got like his his nudes and all that and was getting blackmailed and hearing about like advanced stuff like now you don't even have to click a link if they have your phone number like that's all they need and they could just you know send something to your phone and you won't even know it yeah it's all very scary i i uh i listened to um i listened to a, a podcast and they were talking about like all this ai shit at um at ces and they were presenting it like ai is going to provide so much more security and yada yada because it's gonna it's gonna mean there's so many more like things to defend you and the person 
doing this talk or whatever raised their hand and or asked the person a question was like doesn't that mean that like the people who are trying to like take advantage of you also have access to all this as well and the person was like uh just didn't have any answer and it's like yeah because that's what this that's what all this does it's when you create the technology to like to 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 house all this stuff you also and like help it you're also giving the same tools to the people who are you trying to use it to exploit it so it's i mean it's a race to the bottom and see everybody there yeah there's like watch any sci-fi movie there's no good ending yeah. to ai you yeah. know uh I, i've been a victim to ai uh i, I haven't been like too public about this I, i've talked about this in maybe like one of my like random youtube videos or somewhere but last year I went to Coachella with uh, my, my buddy Nate. Uh, I, I went for Blackpink and I filmed a vlog, right? I you know uh, filmed some stuff around the fest. And then I was like, you know, like right up front for Blackpink, filmed some of their set. And then I put together this uh, Blackpink vlog and I titled it like, you know, Blackpink Coachella 2023, whatever. I uh, uploaded the video, had it set to premiere for like the following day. I go to bed. I wake up to an email from YouTube, from Google. They're like, hey, your YouTube channel has been deleted for violating you know, copyright. And I was just like, what the hell? Like, I, I've ne I, I don't I have any copyright strikes. I don't have any issues. So this was just out of nowhere. And, um, you know, I, I had to reach out to YouTube to be like, hey, like, what's going on? I was like, I think this was a mistake. And they're like, no, uh, you know, our system is pretty good at detecting copyright, you know, violations. And I was just like, no, I was like, go look at the last video I uploaded. It was footage that I filmed from my camera at Coachella. And I was like, I think this got taken down because I had Coachella in the title. And they think that I pirated the stream because I had a nice camera. I was right up front. Yeah. But please don't just leave it up to, oh, we think our system was right. Please just look into it because I've never had any violations. Like, I just want my channel back. And like after like two days, uh, they finally got back to me. They're like, hey, like, yeah, you're right. Like this was an error from like our uh you know system because like they have like an ai system that you know it searches it through was that probably stuff. audio related honestly yeah and it was rather than being video related i bet it was audio related because i think that's what happened to hardcore troubadour with our tom petty episode getting deleted. well okay so the reason why i think it's video is because there's a video on my channel right now that is partially blocked in certain countries because youtube they are claiming that I stole footage from the official uh, feed from the convention that I went to. But it's like, no, I'm literally standing right behind the camera that was filming for the stream. So uh, there's like this you know, situation where they think I'm lying, but, uh, you know, they're not taking down my video. They're letting they're leaving it up, but it, it's just blocked in certain countries. Weird. Yeah. And like, you know, in like on the back end, like it has the very specific timestamps on where they're claiming that, you know, I'm stealing footage or I have copyrighted footage in my video. But it's like, no, like this was filmed on my phone in 4K, but it's because of the positioning. So I'm literally right behind the camera, but I'm so yeah. close. You can't see the camera. So we we almost had the same shot, but quality is different because their camera is better than my phone. So it, 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 it's just a very uh you know uh like you know concerning when it's like okay like like if i was one of those like big youtubers who like this was like my like livelihood like my main income mm -hmm. if i woke up and it was just deleted with like you know no chance no recourse yeah, yeah. It, it was I, I was like wow this is this is kind of scary um but luckily everything's back but uh you know going forward like i plan to go to coachella this year to see another k-pop group and you know be in the same situation but i, I maybe want to try to title it different and try to avoid having this happen again because it's you know it, it was very frustrating yeah or maybe uh i don't know move the camera around a little <laughs> or something. that uh being blocked in in different countries that reminds me of uh my skateboard video the last like full part that i ever had filmed was blocked in America because I skated to American Nightmare and I guess Equal Vision or someone had like was being litigious about their audio rights. So that's what made me think it might have been like audio related mm -hmm. is because um, that is how that video got flagged was for 
And I know it was probably an AI program that picked that up. Yeah. It's awesome. Just, just cool. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, I love AI, but I accept the danger that comes with it. I don't love AI and I hate all the danger that comes with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, I'll sit in, um, uh, you know, talk to chat GPT and it, it's not perfect. Obviously, like, you know, it's still very, very like early stages. Um, and, uh, it, it, but it was just very interesting. And I, I'm not sure if you've seen, um, like they just came out with like a, I, I think it's called like Sora where it can like just through AI, they can create like these minute long video clips now. And they, yes, that shit is sucks, dude. That is so scary. It's going to put so many people out of work. It's pretty scary. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm just like, so uh, people out of work. work. That, that's my thing. Is okay. Maybe, okay, never mind. I'm, I'm all for AI. I'm all for everything that can make our lives simpler to the point where we can work less. If that means that they're, they're going to lower fucking rent, <laughs> allow um, food to be a human right, and and just allow us to have like an ability to provide for ourselves and like exist without struggle but so long as you're going to keep using these kinds of things to cut corners and cut costs and cut down labor meaning you're going to cut out people from their ability to provide for themselves i'm not for it i'm not for any anything like if you like Karl marx is one person who like he imagined like like tech technological advancements and inventions as simplifying life and making more free time for people. It's done none of that. Mm -hmm. He would be shocked to find out how bad we fumbled the bag. And he'd be honestly, he'd be com probably completely surprised that we didn't kill all the wealthy people um, at this point. They, 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 enough people who exist in this world have been tricked into, uh, into being docile as their uh as their feet you know are bleeding and they're they're being just like ground into dust um but uh yeah it's really cool so yeah I, you know i'm all for ai if we can uh if i can get to if i can get the three-day week because of ai then i'm cool with it <laughs> if i can get a four-day week because of ai I'll, i'm all for it but so long as i'm still working six days a week fuck ai yeah i'm i say this i say this from the comfort of my vacation right now <laughs> Yeah, I'm obviously very interested in the technology, uh, but I don't use it in any of like the things that I do. Like I've been pitched. <sighs> I'm trying to remember who told me about it, but um, somebody was just like, hey, like, how do you edit your podcast? And I'm like, uh, I open Premiere I Pro <laughs> and I <laughs> click some buttons and, you know, I, I do everything, like all the cuts, uh, everything. It's all I'm sitting here where I am now and I'm manually doing the cuts. I'm, you know, making sure uh, it has the flow that I think is right. Uh, but they're like, no, like here, like check out this extension and I edit my podcast in five seconds. And I was just like, ah, I don't really like that because it was like, uh, it, it just, I don't want to say soulless, but it just didn't feel like something that I would produce. So even though, yeah, mm -hmm. like that's the content that I created, but like the, the edit wasn't me and, uh, it, it was just really weird. I was just like, oh, I think I'd be better off like hiring like an editor or something, but instead of leaving it yeah. to this weird extension. I'm really curious when hardcore bands are going to start using AI to write lyrics. I don't know. It's probably already happening, or if, or if any already have, yeah, yeah. I mean, and the funny thing is, like, some some AI, like, like I've asked AI to write lyrics like songs that I have that are out, okay, to see like what they would come up with, and it's it's usually pretty funny. It, it you it typically comes out like a like um like the Monkey Fellow version of an Inclination song or something. Mm -hmm. Um, if you ever heard the Monkey Fellow demo, yeah. Um, Yes. Um, so it typically comes out like that. And um, it's funny. But when I read it, sometimes I'm like, dang, there's like definitely like bands I loved from like the early 2010s that easily could have been written. <laughs> but whatever. Yeah, That's fine. I, I had a buddy. Uh, he was in town because we were doing some like K-pop thing and he was like, oh, like I have to write this paper. And I'm like, dude, just have AI write it. 
turn it in and when we just enjoy our fucking weekend like stop crying about it or, and he, he didn't want to do it i was like well what is it about and let's just see if it can produce something that's passable and mm-hmm. we we plugged it in because he's like uh I think he's like going, he's going to be an architect, right? So he had to like, I don't know. I, honestly, I don't remember what the paper was about, but yeah, we just plugged in like, like the key things and it wrote this uh, really awesome paper, but he was scared to use it. And I was just like, dude, I was like, you can ask the same question multiple times and it'll give you different answers every time. So I'm like, all right, you think this one, you know, they might detect it. Just click it again. <laughs> Doug, it's so scary to think about architects possibly being able to pass <laughs> through their school using AI without having to actually learn how to do any of this shit. Um, Ashton made me watch a TikTok earlier about, uh, about um, computer illiteracy, which I felt like it was going to be directed at me. Okay. Um, but it was it was directed at uh, Gen Z and Gen A because they don't know how to use computers. They like don't understand how the mouse works because they're they've been raised in apps, mm-hmm. so they don't understand like like the difference between a laptop and a desktop. They don't understand like like they don't understand like the the technology that they've been using their whole lives, and uh, we are just on track for Wally. That is we are on track for our Wally future where we where we forget how to fucking walk. Well, we we're kind of close to that a couple of years ago. Remember when hoverboards were, were a thing? Dog. Oh my god. Earlier we, we got we fell in a hole of trying to figure out if, if there's possible to do tricks on a Segway. Um <laughs> it seems like there isn't. It seems like everybody who's doing twi- tricks on segways also incorporates a skateboard into it, too. Okay, so it's um, no solo segway tricks. No. No, I guess I mean you could say like maybe a one wheel is uh is kind of a segue. Mm-hmm. But God, that is the most virgin transportation I've ever seen in my whole life. Yeah, I I've never rid uh yeah, I've never ridden a hoverboard, I've never ridden a one wheel. Yeah, me either. I'm also I'm I'm like I'm like almost kind of afraid it'll be like tight. <laughs> like rollerblades or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can see how like a hoverboard would, would be fun, but I've never wanted one. So I just, I don't know. Yeah. That yeah, I, I've seen too many videos of people falling embarrassing. And, and, and I, I do that enough in my regular life that I don't need to, I don't need to accelerate the amount of times I've fallen in an embarrassing way. Yeah, I almost fell. It, it's been like raining, like pretty like uh, heavy over here. And I was leaving the the coffee shop. So the coffee shop that I go to is on the third floor of this mall. And I was going down the escalator to the second floor where I was parked, but the escalators were off. So, you know, they're basically stairs. Yes. And I'm just... There's you know, a Mitch Hedberg joke here for, uh, for those. Oh, okay. I, I've never heard <laughs> it. But, but I'm like walking down the stairs and I'm like, okay. I was like, everything's wet. I don't have an umbrella. I just have my coffee and like the albums that I bought from like the K-pop store. I was like, all right. I was like, as long as I'm cautious, I'll be fine. And like, I'm fine, right? I, I get down and I'm like the third step. Cause like, it, it, you know, the, the escalator stopped. So it wasn't like, you know, completely flush. So I, I got down to the third step and then I was going down to the second but it was like halfway up, you know, because like the escalator had stopped, mm-hmm. like, you know, um, when it was moving. Yeah. yeah so I, I it wasn't just a, a perfect step. So I almost slipped and it was so embarrassing because there were like a bunch of people around. And, Fantastic. you know, because I, I felt just because I, I did the motion, I was like, you know, I I, I would like almost fell, but I caught myself. But I, it was just so exaggerated. I was like, oh, God, I was like, I wish that I, I much rather have fallen so people would have felt bad for me. But just everybody's like looking at me because I, I just look like this crazy person. Because <laughs> you like, almost fell. Yeah. Dude, uh, when um, our Long Island show the other day was so sticky and sweaty and uh, gross, I went I was like went to spin kick during our set and stepped on like a part of the linoleum floor. So one of my feet was on linoleum. The other foot was on carpet. Okay. And just almost did full splits for a second. Jeez. It was, it was awesome. I I made like a really funny face. I know if there's any footage or or photo of my reaction from that, I am shocked for sure. Yeah, I did see a video of you kicking somebody during your set. Yeah, I drop kicked somebody <laughs> out of my shoes. <laughs> you went out of your shoes. What the hell? Yeah, I drop kicked some kid with both feet and landed without one of my shoes on. I'd be stressed. Like, where's my shoe? <laughs> it was it, just right there on the ground. Oh, okay. I don't know how it fell off, but it did. 
Yeah. And then I had to try to put it back on while screaming and and walking around trying to get my shoe back on. It was good. I think okay. I lost my shoe twice during that set. Somebody else flat tired me at one point and that lost it. But yeah, it was, it was fun. Long Island rocks, dude. Do you want to just talk about that now? Yeah, sure. Were you at all nervous? Because I'm not sure if you were following up with like the show the night before got like shut down. So I knew we were going to be fine at TBI because it's it, it, the, the vendetta was with Vitus. And apparently it's like, like, I don't want to talk out of school, but like somebody had like somebody who'd gotten like banned from Vitus had been like filing complaints for like months and months and months. Mm-hmm. And it finally like got just taken care of. But like, and by taking care of, I mean, like, the fucking Department of Building showed up to shut down St. Vitus. And I I don't know what their situation is right now. I know there's, like, lots of, like, legal associates reaching out to, like, try to help them get clear. Because there's, like, a bunch of codes that they weren't up to date with because it's New York and nobody ever is. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I've heard a lot of people talking about how when St. Vitus was built, there was like nothing in that area of Brooklyn. So it didn't bother anybody for there to be like, you know, like this loud metal venue going on. Um, and now that area is getting gentrified. So that real estate is a little bit more um, bougie, I guess. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of people being like, Oh, you know, this wasn't an, an, an issue five years ago. It wasn't an issue 10 years ago, but now that, people aren't afraid to go to that neighborhood anymore. It's a huge issue. Meanwhile, there's like tons of construction or development going on in New York that aren't following code, aren't following popular practice or um, like legal practices in place as far as time that you're allowed to, to construct, nor are they following like safety guidelines and whatnot. But those people are probably bribing people to keep people out of their business. So but St. Vitus isn't, you know, isn't isn't able to grease palms enough to keep this kind of attention off of them. So who pays for it? The punks always pay for it. Yeah, I saw somebody like I guess they like found the guy's Twitter and he was just like, yeah, there's all these like screenshots of him just being really negative about it. Yeah. Um, also, apparently photos of him uh, sig heiling in other uh, at other times. I don't think the guy's an actual Nazi, but I think he's like edgy. And, oh, okay. Uh, he just likes attention like that. Yeah. So I hope he gets a lot of attention soon, like a whole lot of, t- of attention around his face. Yeah, I'm just happy that uh, you know, obviously, Mind Force, awesome band, uh, great people. So it, it, it's cool to see that they, you know, have that makeup show. Uh, I, I think it's like early March, like March 9th or something. Uh, oh, they've already got something booked. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. shout out I've been to, completely offline for days. Shout out to Bayway. Bayway's on that show. I'm a huge fan of awesome. Bayway. Yeah, you know, I, I've been, uh, you know, uh, spoiler alert, I, I've been offline uh, for like the past couple of days. I broke my phone. Um, Hell let, yeah. Let me, um, let me unlock my phone and I can show you. This is like a default screen. Like, I don't even know if you can see, but this is my phone at full brightness. Like, and it's like, you can see it's, oh, no. it's, it's like, like flickering. flickering on and off. That's yeah cool. yeah I, I was walking inside my house like and i was like i had a bunch of bundled and i dropped my phone like i've dropped it before um but i guess this was just very unlucky i dropped my phone and i didn't think anything of it i just put it in my pocket and then i got inside got settled and i remember i was like all right i'm gonna just get on tiktok for like 10 minutes i just want to see some funny stuff just kind of decompress and i unlocked my phone and it was just so dark and flickering and i was like oh no like this is not good um and then I, I'm at war with like, uh, I, I have T-Mobile, whatever. Uh, I'm at war with like T-Mobile. So now I, I can't get a new phone till like Monday, uh, which is like a couple days from now. So I'm just, uh, you know, just not really on social media, which I don't care. Like, I'm not like dying for it. Like, it's really fun and, you know, uh, passes the time. I enjoy uh, scrolling. Um, I don't call it doom scrolling because I, you know, I choose to do that. I could close it whenever I want, but. I'm yeah. not sure you can. Uh, no, I can, but um, now that my phone's <laughs> broken, uh, you know, I, I, I just have to wait like a couple of days. It's fine. I, I just, I'm like, okay, cool. Now I don't, I'm not spending that 20, 30 minutes on TikTok. Now I'm just go, you know, do something else. Your doom scroll awaits you. <laughs> it's not doom scrolling. <laughs> 
because I just go and it's it, it's so entertaining. But I like you know I, I think it'd be doom scrolling if I'm like throwing away like my responsibilities or my obligations or is ruining relationships. You know. Well, for me, doom scrolling is 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 a specific kind of scrolling online, and that's okay. when you're when you are in a negativity hole or you're you found a dark corner where in which you can't look away from that's right. doom scrolling yeah but if you're if you're just scrolling for enjoyment you're uh you're just addicted to your phone <laughs> but okay I, 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 i'm on tiktok and, and something breaks through right it's not my typical k-pop it's not my typical uh you know comedy stuff if it's like all right like we know jamie likes the conspiracy like let's throw something in there see if we can you know throw them off track for a little bit i'm like okay all right here's some you know fake tesla and space video i'll watch it i'll entertain that because it's you know I, I switch it up sometimes but like i but i knowingly i'm like okay i know this is here to throw me off of like the stuff that i truly enjoy but i was like, all right we, we can make a left here you know get you know tesla exposed it's fine i mean i'm all for that you know me yeah yeah for sure for sure like i am <laughs> Yeah, I I never once believed that they really sent a Tesla to space. It was so fake. And you know, when Elon gave that explanation, oh, it it looks so fake because it's real. I'm like, I'm not buying that for a single second. You guys are all dummies. You you know you know what my my thoughts are on the Tesla in space. What? I don't fucking care. Okay, all right. I just don't fucking care. I don't care that they did it. I don't think it's cool. I don't think it isn't cool that they didn't do it or they faked it. I don't care at all. All I care about is Elon Musk is a fucking faker. <laughs> I was just like, he's <laughs> fake. He's fake. If he didn't, if he's fake, if he did or didn't send Tesla to, to space, he's just a fucking fib or he sucks. Do you see where the Tesla trucks are already rusting? No, wait, uh, are you talking about the cyber trucks? Yeah, the cyber trucks. Yeah, the right. cyber trucks are already rusting because of the kind of metal they made them out of is not made to get wet. They made cars that can't get wet, Jamie. Well, it just reminds me of those Fiskers that, you know, blew up because they fell into like that river, or the ocean or whatever. But yeah, that, that is really weird. That seems like a really big oversight to. Yeah, you think. Yeah, I've seen like two in person down here. Were saying. they were they were they riddled with bullets or did, were the, was the paneling falling off? No, uh, well they, they're like uh, it, it had like um, like temporary license plates and because it was just like purchased or whatever, mm -hmm. so. They're really new. God, people are fucking fools, dude. Uh, I, I don't like the way they look, so I'm I'm not a fan. I just, again, like we're talking about the Apple Vision Pro or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. I can get it if you're being honest with yourself, like Chad was, where he just wanted to have the worst version that will ever exist, knowing that will only get better. But so many people just wanting to have like the newest thing that there's never been one of before. Like it's this whole amazing new thing. And it's like, dog, you bought something that like hasn't been tested really yet. Like it hasn't tested. It hasn't stood the test of time yet. Mm -hmm. so we're not and even then, like one, one year with it. Yeah. And then six months later, it's, some of them are already rusting and it's like. Yeah, you could have just waited in six months and you'd have found out more reasons why you should have waited even longer. I don't know. People got too much money. I need more money. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we need more money and other people need way fucking less. Yeah, it, it, it is a, a struggle. You know, I. Yeah, I, I, I try not to get too caught up in it, right? Because if I if my sole focus was like, all right, I got to just keep making money, and it's like, no, like it, it, it's nice, but I I want to still be able to enjoy life and yeah, do stuff. You can't take money with you, and you could die tomorrow. <sighs> die tomorrow, yeah. If I died tomorrow, I I, I used to just want to live uh, until I got to enjoy Street Fighter Six, uh, which I did. I have. Street Fighter Six, uh, you know, is out now. Bucket list, bucket list done. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> but I'm just like, all right, that was like a milestone because it was so far out, right? It was so yeah. far out. Um, uh, I was like, you know, still. I I think about it because like, like when I first moved to to Orange County, 
uh, that was uh, in 2010 and we're about to we're in 2024 and it's like, I can't believe I've, I've lived out here for so long and like I outlasted and, and it wasn't like a competition or anything but like you know just through life whatever like the the friend that I came out here with like he's gone back and forth um, and I've just kind of like I, I, I tried to leave once it wasn't successful I was trapped in Orange County um, but uh, but like that's just like a big like milestone in my life and I'm like all right I was like 21 and I moved away from home first time like leaving the desert on my own and sometimes I, I like just like stop and think about like holy shit it's been so long like was this the right choice I don't know I think it's the right choice you're still there yeah maybe I don't know this is things I think about no, I feel you. I don't regret it though. Like I, I, I never like think about like, oh god, like this sucks. No, I, I, I've always uh, try to like see like the good in everything that I'm doing. Yeah, that's the that's the best way to live. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's the like it, the trying to see the good in things rather than looking for uh for shit to be pissed about. I mean like that's probably my least favorite quality in people is are people who just just can't just chill and be satisfied or or at least like not spend every single moment of the day like trying to bring somebody else's good time down Mm -hmm. or having to rain on somebody's parade or just not letting somebody like just enjoy something for the sake of it being it being fun or silly or stupid, like the whole Madam Web thing. Like we, we, we were talking about, like, I want to I want to see Madam Web. I know it's going to suck, mm-hmm. but I think it might suck in a way that's fun, like Morbius did. Yeah, I I, I haven't seen it and I never like, you know, I, I don't mind spoilers, like whatever. So I, I listened to this podcast of uh, people actually like talking about the the good that's in Madam Web. Obviously, there's a lot of bad, but just mm-hmm. I'm hearing it from, uh, you know, obviously like uh, people's perspective uh, that I respect and like you know people's like opinions that I value. It was cool to hear them talk about, you know, what's good, but also they talked about what what was bad. But it wasn't just like, all right, like this movie sucks. Like they didn't just completely trash it, which is easy to do. I just liked hearing, uh, you know, their perspective on it because they, uh, I, I feel like they approach it in a uh, in, in a way that just wouldn't tried to uh, you know get me to hop on this like bandwagon to trash the movie because it's bad you know mm-hmm. yeah no i mean and uh, like even even eternals which i severely did not like i still had like fun with and even the parts that like i thought were incredibly stupid and didn't make any sense or even some of the infuriating parts it was really fun to talk to you about it yeah <laughs> I feel like yeah, that, so that, that, that that's always one thing with like this whole uh, MCU is that no matter how bad or how good, like it's always going to lead us to this podcast. We're, we're always going to have a conversation about it. Yeah, which is awesome. that being said, you want to start talking about what if? <sighs> yeah, what if? Um, you know, it wasn't. If I'm we being didn't honest, talk about the first season of this at all, and I was like shocked with how good it was or at least how much i enjoyed it yeah because some of that you know you know some of those events you kind of like you know influenced some things that actually happened in like, mm-hmm. the the uh you know the cinematic universe because right there because obviously it's like it's in the mcv but that's like the animated portion and we we're now seeing like those like crossover because of what if which is crazy mm-hmm. because you know these are like some of the crazy stories that uh you know are just like off the wall but it, but it was really cool to see. Yeah, no, I liked it. I thought the any again, like talking about the way it worked itself into the Doctor Strange movie. I'm trying to think of what else, um, what other events have worked their way into into the real the live action stuff. And I can't think of anything other than the Doctor Strange stuff with the dark Doctor Strange, and then also the uh, the Peggy Carter. Are you, are you talking about season two or season one? No, season one. Okay. Yeah, I can't even remember season one, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, I remember like the what, like Killmonger, uh, you know, teaming up with Iron Man uh, thing. I remember that one. 
And I can remember the Peggy Carter thing mostly because it gets brought back up in this season. Mm -hmm. Um, And I really liked the Ultron coming together as the villain at the end of the the last one and becoming a a multiversal villain uh, in a way. That part when he like can see the Watcher Mm -hmm. and is like, what the fuck's that? And like the fact that they got uh, James Spader to come back and do the voice and everything, which was the best part of Age of Ultron was his vocal performance as Ultron, if you ask me. Um, I really like that. And the look of him, too, was was great. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like the look of the animation. Like, I mean, before we get into some of the story and whatnot, I just. I think it's uh, it's really like. Well done from like a cinematic point of view as yeah. far as animation goes it's very cool 100 percent. because if you look at like their other animated stuff like the other cartoons like i don't want to mm-hmm. like talk about uh like the spider verse because that that's on a whole nother level as well that's, but, yeah no it's that redefined <laughs> yeah but uh, but you can tell that this was like uh some like high budget stuff because even with the mm-hmm. the voice actors they brought in a lot of like yeah the, the even, people if actually, even if they're replacing people mm-hmm. it's still decent talent there's replacing them. like lake bell's an awesome voice actor and for her to be standing in for uh scarlett johansson is, is perfect yeah so yeah I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of it too i love the art and it was just uh it, it, it just looked different and it was, it was just nice to see something that wasn't like everything else yeah, it doesn't look like DC animation. It doesn't look like even like a lot of the other Marvel animation they've done. I really like that they like made a point to make this like something different. It doesn't look Pixar like if it's very stylized in a way that I think works a lot in the yeah. action. The action sequences are so well chore- choreographed. Yeah, because it, it looks more like an actual comic book than like a cartoon, if that makes sense. Yes, exactly. And I uh, yeah, no. So I really liked it. And like getting into the first episode, the what if Nebula joined the Nova Corps? Like, man. what if Nebula was Blade Runner? <laughs> I just don't, man. I, I I love Yondu, man. So to, to have to see him dead in the very beginning, it's like, geez, I I, I don't yeah. want to see him like this. Yeah, no, that was it was hard. Like I I I thought uh, I thought this one was cool. I um I liked a lot of because because I think Marvel like. I think Marvel does a good job sometimes of like stepping up to like controversial topics. Um, and then sometimes they like cower away from them, but without like making like making the point all the way. Mm-hmm. And I think this episode did a really good job of like taking on like a pretty like a pretty complicated like topic or situation of you know what is so Ronan the accuser is attacking Nova and they put these shields up but when you build walls you not not only do you keep people out but you keep people in Mm -hmm. so they created a almost prison planet yeah for for their whole for everyone and it's just in 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 that situation like what typically happens in in these like closed off countries with like also kind of authoritarian leaders crime just runs rampant because graft in in bribery and all the different like illicit things just like come alive in a way to help supplant the uh the inability for i guess like commerce of a more productive manner so it like makes sense that nova just dives into this seedy world of insular um you know grime and uh i thought it was really well done i love this episode even though th- this one doesn't pertain to anything else it doesn't extend further than just it being a what if which i really liked i, I really liked the couple episodes in this season that we're just non-connected to anything else yeah i i, I was watching it but also keeping track of like okay like what is going to carry over because obviously like in season one there's the few mm-hmm. you know plot lines that carried over and uh you know it's a, a way for them to kind of close off the season um but yeah i i really enjoyed the the first episode and i just i was just surprised at like how much power 
that the I, I forget her name the 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 leader she's just like all right we're closing out the planet and I, I felt like wow there's not like a whole procedure to do that and i get yeah, it like the nova they're, prime yeah they're, they're like under attack but it's like mm-hmm. to close the planet office for like 50 years it's like that's a pretty big decision you know and well i do love though it, it fucking the the fucking the point at the end of it was just that kind of power people shouldn't be in that co- making power mm-hmm. decisions like that alone because at the same time, then she decides, oh, well, I'll work with the person who wants to kill everybody because mm-hmm. he's power promising corrupts. me that I'll stay in power. Yeah. And it's it's so it's so real. It's so fucking real. And that's why, like, I mean, dog, like you you want to ask, you know, you want to look at reforming our society and uh, fucking number one thing, term limits. Yeah, it needs it's a, across the fucking board. Yeah, it no, needs to extend no, more to yes. and so just the president, right? And like the yes, judges not just the president, and, senators, like Congress people, fucking everybody, like global fucking term limits, dude. No, no ability to just perpetuate and and king make and do and pass power along to you know chosen people to keep the continuity and keep everything just going along as it's always supposed to. Like I. I can't remember I can't remember where we rank but like the United States is like is like 20th in like like as far as like real democracy goes in this mm. in this in this planet earth we live on yet if you asked any joe on the street they would be like oh no we live in a democracy and it's like we actually fucking don't okay uh, curious uh a couple weeks ago uh, Tucker Carlson sat down with Vladimir Putin. Yeah, insane that that happened. Did you watch the interview at all? I watched. Uh, I watched clips and some of the highlights enough to know that he just ball washed Vladimir Putin for what an hour and a half or something like that, and never asked him a hard question once. Yeah, the majority of the interview is we're getting a, a Russian history lesson. But the fact that Vladimir Putin in that interview, like, you know, says that, like, yeah, like the, the president doesn't do shit for the country, right? Like he doesn't make like those d- decisions and uh, just kind of like airing out. Oh, no. That. And that's the most frustrating thing about that. Uh, that piece of shit is he he actually does say a lot of he does speak a lot of truth mm-hmm. to Western power. Yeah. But he's such a liar and piece of shit. That he's so it's so easy to dismiss everything he says full cloth as propaganda or bullshit or manipulation or anything like that. But and he's so fucking smarmy the way he says some of the shit. But he is actually saying true things, too. And uh, even though Tucker Carlson can't actually like. Converse with him on on a lot of that stuff, because Tucker Carlson's dad worked for the fucking CIA. And he is part of this whole, you know, power structure we have in this country, even though he's on Twitter, which nobody watches anymore because all the people who watched him are 80 years old and aren't on Twitter because they don't know how to use a computer. Um, Like. It does really fucking suck that the only people in positions to actually like have a platform to question the way we the way we run things as a world are dismissed outright because they're you know people like vladimir putin yeah it's really tricky like a lot of like uh, i i try to talk to like you know friends and stuff about that interview and like <laughs> you know it like a lot of people didn't want to talk about it which i get you know obviously uh you know when, when you hear those names tucker carlson uh you know vladimir putin uh, you know obviously they're not known for the best things uh but i was just very fascinated that something like that you know obviously uh you know could live uh online in, in america and uh you know i don't think it, it would have been been able to live on twitter with like the old like owners and the old twitter but now that elon musk like owns it obviously he <clears throat> is like all about like free speech except for when it comes to alex jones uh but uh you know i was like oh this is crazy that something like this could live on the internet and well it also it doesn't challenge power like even even vladimir putin saying even vladimir putin pointing out that when after after shock treatment after everything when he was elected president 
um, Bill Clinton was friendly towards him mm. and almost and, and making it clear that there was a possibility of of Russia being involved and welcomed into this Western style of, you know, neoliberalism. And oh, a couple days later had to be like, actually, no, there's no he's way like, that can happen. Nah, happen. he's like, they, they, they don't like, fuck with because you. Because <laughs> we still need a boogeyman. We still need a boogeyman. We hadn't found China yet. We hadn't found, we hadn't, we hadn't, uh, we hadn't created the, the terror, um, you know, the, the, the Islamophobia necessary mm -hmm. to keep people um, pumping, you know, support for the war on terror. So in order to keep America as this global, you know, this global hegemon good guy, we needed a, a you know, a, a major adversary and we hadn't figured out the other one yet. So Russia, it had to still be. And it's just it's just crazy and stupid that that we live in a world that is is so um, is so easily tricked into thinking that it's as simple as bad guys and good guys. Yeah, uh, another uh, you know tangent. We say I'm, this as we're talking about comic book. <laughs> yeah, um, but but I like tying in this this real world <laughs> stuff. Uh, so like I, I've been watching. I'm I'm not sure if you're familiar, but there's like these like First Amendment auditors on YouTube. Um, no. Okay, so anyways, I, I I watch like like there's three like like my top three is number one is this guy, uh, Sean Paul Reyes out of Long Island. He goes by Long Island Audit, and then there's a guy from the Bay. I'm not sure uh, where exactly, but he's called Bay Area Transparency. He's awesome. And then there's a guy from uh, New Jersey, from Florida, moved to New Jersey, and his name is uh, he goes by Tuapri. He's more like the comedic side of it. But it's very scary when they'll walk into, uh, you know, these like, um, you know, uh, public buildings and they're just getting like yelled at about like their cameras and people saying it's illegal to film in a public building. But it's just like uh, not true. Like if you go read like in the Constitution, it's like, you know, it's a protected activity. But just like how how the like the public, even like the police, like some police will show up and not even know that they can do that um, as long as they're like in the you know public accessible areas. It, it's so scary. I was like, wow, like if you know, I don't know the law, like the back of my hand, but I was like, if uh, you know, I, I've learned a lot from watching these videos because like uh, like Long Island Audit, Bay Area Transparency, they're all about education to a pre uh, he's just more about uh, like like he's a comedy than education because he he he'll go in as like characters, but the other guys are actually like serious, right? Like they they know like case law stuff, whatever. Um, but I was like, wow, if I went in there like they did, I would I would end up getting like you know uh, my vi my rights violated because I just didn't know any better. But uh, it, it's scary to see like how many people like who work for the government don't actually know the laws. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Oh, I mean, dude, like, I mean, most cops really don't know the law. Like, yeah. And they, the, they, the they abuse of power, what, like the yeah, like intimidation tactics, it's crazy. Yeah. They're just, they're just following the lead of whoever, whoever trained them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. I mean, and also like so many laws were written, like it's, it's crazy. Like uh, I can't remember who it was, but I used to follow, I used to follow a Twitter account that would just tweet exclusively about like really outdated laws that were still on the books mm -hmm. and like like no, like people aren't being prosecuted under these laws but they still could be mm -hmm. if the desire was there like um and i mean and then you get down to like like what well, everything going on in in atlanta with cop city and whatnot and people being charged with domestic terrorism and that's not what that is but because of how we because of everything that we were able to pass when we were all afraid of any person in a you know in a burqa or hijab like we now have basically given the green light for the government to lock us up for things of that nature that are not even remotely that kind of a violation not saying like you know like we were we were able to pass these off of based off islamophobia and now it's just really interesting to see it like 
coming down on like white suburbanites. And I mean, and, and the J sixers too, they, they, they got treated the same way. And it's like, y'all, y'all were hoorah when the Patriot Act got passed. It. So, I mean, yeah, I'm so, I'm sorry that you signed up for authoritarian government. Like, and you just don't like it when your team's not not in charge of the 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 boot. <laughs> yeah, it's strange too because I uh, it's like my my YouTube is um, like a lot of like K-pop First Amendment auditor stuff and like you know video game stuff. But it, it seems like like today specifically, which it was really tripping me out at, um, at work. I was watching uh, you know videos on YouTube at work, but every ad was like a Trump ad. They're like. Hey, we're selling, we're selling this bobblehead. Buy it before like it sells out, or like you know they're like um, there's uh, some senator in California. Uh, he he's like pro Trump, and there was like a smear campaign for him, but like, trying to get people not to vote for him because he's like pro Trump. And I'm like, what the hell is all like this? Like, I get it. Well, like you know, it's an election year, so I'm like, okay, they're going crazy. Like they're trying to really get ahead of this. And yeah, I mean, it's fucking. It's also it, goddamn February. <laughs> it, yeah, that's why I was tripping. I'm like, this is crazy. I was like, they're they're going heavy, and like somehow, yeah, these ads are. Like, like, you know, like I, I, I'm just not used to seeing those kinds of ads pop up when I'm watching like the stuff that I'm watching. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, I get it all the time. And I, I mean, given I do watch a lot of political stuff, but mm-hmm. I mean, when I'm just like when I'm. I want to say when I'm just like watching like videos about Star Wars shit and stuff, I'll get like fucking Prager you ads still. Mm-hmm. And um, that's not what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to watch something about like like uh Revan and I'm getting like, you know, how the United States didn't uh how the Indians had it coming. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's fucking cool. Yeah. All right. Episode two, I'm gonna be honest, probably like a lower tier episode for me. We'll get to my my oh. lo- I have one like low tier episode for sure. Okay. later okay um and it is uh it's not i just don't like how it starts i love how it ends okay but i i, I actually like this one i thought this one was interesting i i like these where the whole world is like very very different uh, and i thought this one was cool i like the the winter soldier shit in this one was cool but also you know that <laughs> yeah uh i just didn't like because I, I i feel like it, Peter Quill's powers were it just seemed so lopsided before before he was back on Earth versus when he got to Earth. It just seemed for as powerful as he was supposed to be when he got back to Earth. uh, He was just really tame. And, you know, it's like, oh, Thor comes and just knocks him out. Wow. Yeah, but I mean, he also like he was like back on Earth, but he wasn't like back on Earth to like really conquer for ego. He was just back on Earth like being a child who shouldn't have that kind of power was it the movie brightburn i still haven't seen brightburn but i heard it's amazing i've never even heard of it it's the 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 evil child superman movie it's okay a horror movie um i heard it's badass but uh but yeah no that's that's kind of what this this one struck me as is like like a, a more innocent brightburn like what does he do he goes to coney island yeah but it's just like okay like he um What's her name? Why am I drawing a blank on the daughter with the Walkman? Like, you know, who's like, who's like mirror image. Oh, Hope Van Dyne. Yeah, Hope. I was just like, oh, really? The, like, she's, she just is, just happens to steal the key car, walks down there, breaks him free. And he's just w- w- like, when he got to Earth, can he just been like, yo, like, I'm not here to kill anybody. Why did he have to wait to talk to Hope and be like, yeah, like, I, like, like, uh, you know, be like so chill. When he, came, I, mean, I think he was just child with superpowers that child shouldn't have. Yeah, but I mean, there's there's plenty of X Men who caused like untold havoc when their powers uh, presented and they weren't. Capable yeah, but they weren't. To, but he was sent to conquer Earth, and you know he he shows up trying to conquer Earth, but then when he gets captured, he totally switches up and he's just like, no, like I'm just trying to get to Missouri, my mom, whatever. But I'm like, come on, dude. There's a reason why Thor knocked you out. He didn't just come knock out a kid for no reason. I mean, he is just a child. But he's at that point, he was developed enough to know what he's doing. Yeah. I mean, I kind of wanted to rewatch this one just to kind of re- remember, but 
I don't remember having too much of an issue with this one. That one, this was just the one that I didn't like. And I, 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 I think it was just because he, he didn't stand on business. He, he, he got captured <laughs> and he's just switched up. And I'm like, come on, dude. I'm trying to think. So the, the team that went up against him was Thor, uh, T'Chaka, Black uh, Panther. Ant-Man and Giant-Man. Ant-Man and Giant-Man. That's right. And and Winter Soldier. Yeah. Yeah, you see, I thought that was a cool squad. I think that was I, that would kind of that cool. kind of did this one for me was was the squad. I thought yeah, it was cool. Cool squad because I I I love that they're given, you know, like Giant Man and Hank Pym, you know, the spotlight. Because mm -hmm. uh, obviously uh you know, there's so much like so many characters out there that they that they could have gone with like the more modern stuff, but I love that they're given shine to these older superheroes. Yeah, no, and, and here Michael Douglas's voice was was awesome. I think that I think all that stuff kind of made it for me. So I was I was cool with this episode based on based yeah. on cast alone. He's he's a like he to me he's just like one of those perfect castings for Hank Pym. You know, like when mm -hmm. I think of I just love his character. Like all of his appearances, he's awesome. Yeah, no, he's he's perfectly curmudgeonly enough to 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 play <laughs> the asshole that Hank Pym is. Yeah, because he understands the. You know, <laughs> the troubles that comes along with being a superhero yep. and developing all this new tech and he's great having a lot of it taken from you okay the, this next episode episode three probably my favorite episode this is your favorite one yeah because holiday right i'm a sucker for the holidays christmas okay. is like my favorite holiday and um i just love that we get a, a big focus on someone who's not one of the main like Avengers, right? Like we get to see, uh, you know, uh, Hogan, uh, Happy Hogan, to try to you know do this task for Tony Stark, but then he somehow stumbles his way into this crazy role and just ends up having to defend Avengers Tower. It was awesome. I did think so. I thought this episode was probably the funniest one. Okay. This yep. episode was definitely the funniest one. The Die Hard references were fucking perfect. Yes, Cat Darcy Dennings was perfect. I um, love Cat Dennings, by the way. Yeah, you know, I think I think I just thought this one was too silly. Okay, but now that I'm thinking back on it, I'm like, nah, it was really funny. Yeah, it, it was just great because it, it, I feel like it just captured like just like you know just a holiday filler episode, a lot of comedy. It was it wasn't super serious right because remember those scenes where he's like trying to call for help he calls natasha and yeah. she's like yo like i'm uh, I, about to fight this you know black widow that's killed you know 17 yeah. and she's like no nah, i killed 18 you know and then he's like he's calling everybody and everybody's preoccupied with other stuff so he's like damn it i have to figure this out for myself and then just somehow through the chaos he actually gets injected with like hulk's blood and yeah. turns into this crazy monster, which I, I want to touch on later because obviously there's a reappearance. Mm, back, but yeah. um, that was crazy. No, I thought it was good. When when he falls through the ceiling, um, and he's so freaked out that the uh, Justin Hammer's goons are going to see him, mm -hmm. and then finally all the lights come on, and he goes, "You guys can totally see me." Game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that part really made me laugh. Yeah. There were there were some, there were multiple parts in this yeah. episode that like and really got me got me to laugh pretty fucking hard. Yeah, and I, I don't think much of this show this season made me laugh as hard as this episode mm -hmm. did. And obviously, so, yeah, no, I'm I'm good. I'm on I'm on board with this one being one of the better ones. Yeah, and I I, I just love also uh, a villain like uh, Justin Hammer. You know, Hammer Dude. Industries getting to you know get get Bring some like, Sam Rockwell back, please. Yeah. Please bring Sam Rockwell back. I don't know if he's going to be in Captain America 4, but God damn it, it would rock if he was. Yeah, pop up somewhere. Doesn't have or to if it. he's in Ironheart, if Ironheart's still happening. <sighs> there's, uh, I think it's still happening. There's an Armor Wars movie. Yeah, just so. all of those. It, it just I need to see Sam Rockwell in the MCU again. He was so fucking funny mm -hmm. in Iron Man 2. He was the best part about it. All right. I'm down. the best part of Iron Man 2. I would really love to see him come back. So yeah. No, you're right. That 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 one fucking rocked. All right. Fourth episode. This is uh, the one that I don't like how it starts. Okay, so this is the what if Iron Man crashed into the Grandmaster. So this yes. is this goes back to like the Battle of New York, right? Where Tony yes. Stark, you know, sends the nuke 
uh, to space. But the hole closes up before he gets back there. So I'm just going to widen or like, what don't you like about that? Because I don't really have an issue with the opening. I think that this, that whoever is, I can't remember who's voicing Tony Stark. Mick Winger. Yeah, Winger. Okay. Voicing Tony Stark. He is not it. (laughs) It's He's doing a good impression. Yeah. But he doesn't have, he doesn't have it like Robert Downey Jr. does. And I think it comes off as like this like quippy Joss Whedon style um, comic book movie stuff that like ruined Justice League and has ruined so many other movies outside of the MCU and just regular movies now everybody has to have that that Joss Whedon fucking Marvel humor and I think I was just so like I haven't seen it in that like that like filtered like regurgitated form in a while that seeing it like seeing something imitate be the the source material for that kind of uh like humor and style of of comedy and filmmaking or whatever that we see everywhere now i think it just like pissed me off but then once it got sincere when it got sincere when he starts talking to gamora about like not being his father and about the expectations and all that stuff when the, mm. when the episode gets like actually has heart and meaning i'm immediately on board and i fucking i was i, I actually really liked the like the second half of this episode a lot yeah I, I was stoked on uh you know valkyrie korg uh you know Thanos. korg is ph- phenomenal when he says the grandmaster made me sit use me as a paperweight <laughs> He made me sit on my nemesis. Mm-hmm. That really fucking got me too. Yeah, Pretty yeah, fun. yeah. When I look at the the you know actors actresses coming back and you know doing the voiceovers, it, it does make me a little sad when they they don't get like the Robert Downey Juniors to come back yeah. to do Iron Man because you know is he too busy? Is it too much money to pay him? Um, ah, yeah, it. Because, you know, they have some of the actual people like come back and do it. I was like, man, this is. Yeah, I mean, they didn't get Zoe Saldana for this one either. No. So. But when you look at. That's the Thompson and Jeff Goldblum, though. That's yeah. Pretty cool. Josh Brolin, Thanos. Yeah, Josh Brolin. I mean, he's like fucking one line. And honestly, <laughs> the, whatever line he said, that could have easily just been cut out of one of the other movies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take this just, audio track. Yeah, they could have um, just done that in editing. Um. But yeah, no, I uh, I thought the race stuff was cool. The when his when his suit turns into the so, fucking race car, yeah, because he had his stupid chariot with a big yeah, wheel. That yeah, that part fucking rocked. Yeah, that part was super fucking cool. That was badass. Because that was like classic Tony Stark. That was he says you choose the chariots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he already had he already that had ace. a plan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, and that was awesome. And I also like I love though too like even taking it to the like the the sky view the mile high view of of the stories and whatnot and then this universe comparing it to our 616 universe i like that tony stark is doing the captain america thing he's seeing a problem and he's running straight into it yeah he's he, he had running away he it. had that line um where it's like it's like oh it's like the campground rule or the campsite rule mm-hmm. he's like he's like he's like i, I want to leave it better than what, when I saw it. it, and I was like, "Yeah, hell yeah!" That's why little Tony Stark. He, he, yeah, he I know. And that's did. in this. I will say, dude, this episode, like everything about him and his character and his 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 motivation and everything, like I thought of you watching this, not just because we're going to talk about it, but I was like, "This is why Jamie likes Tony Stark." Mm-hmm. His integrity. It's this and this is in th- yes, his integrity in this specific like aspect of him is why I like Tony Stark. Yeah, because you know, saving because even in like the the beginning when he um you know uh, saw like the news report 
uh, and he, he sees Pepper Potts and he's just like, oh, Pepper, like, you know, she was saved. Like, he's like, we won. And, uh, yeah. you know, God, just going from saving. He doesn't care about what's going on with him. Yeah. He doesn't care that he's in some new form plant. Yeah. He's just happy that everybody was safe back home. Yeah. And that was, you know, that's, and that's perfect. That was perfect, like, showcase of his character. And mm-hmm. I thought, I thought it was good. I love how fucking stupid we can get about this stupid cartoon, too. Well, dude, you got to think about it. This has been a part of our lives for so long. You know, it's not. It goes deep, man. It goes deep. I know. I just love. I love that we can have this insanely like like intricate conversation about like a thirty minute cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th- th- that's why these things are awesome. That's yeah. why this, th- and also that's why this podcast is awesome. Like, I- I'm happy that we committed to the MCU and we never look back. Right? Yeah. So. No, we're still in. What if Captain Carter fought the Hydra Stomper? Now, this is where I was surprised. I'm like, okay, okay, this is like the anchor, right? This is the returning storyline. This is what's mm-hmm. going to, you know, kind of carry through the season. Because um, for me, I was like, okay, damn, they really enjoyed this Captain Carter and Steve Rogers. I really like the Captain Carter shit. I think her action sequences look awesome. They get better, right? Towards the yeah. end, when when she, you know, obviously will get there. But yeah, it, yeah. she she's so sick because like but when she's fighting, when she's when when she, when Bucky stands up and doesn't and is like, "Yo, man, what's what are you doing?" Like, and gets in the way of Natasha killing mm-hmm. killing Steve in the in the Hydra Stomper suit or whatever. And when she comes in and like hits the arm out of the way with the shield and just starts like going fucking going crazy mma mode on uh on the hydra stomper it fucking rocks it's super cool yeah i i, I love that sequence because she was just like like just like stuck on him and they're just like this close quarters like crazy like combat yeah it's super badass and dude fucking everybody they brought back for that one i mean frank grillo comes back for that episode um sebastian stan like it's it's a fucking it's a really good cast for this one and uh well i well, i don't know why i was so surprised at how much bucky aged because he never got the serum oh in that timeline okay that that makes he sense. never got the serum oh, in that okay. timeline because because steve didn't either okay all right so that one went over my head because I, I was thinking I was like, yeah. why does that why does that point bothering me like why why can't i figure out why that doesn't make sense okay now that makes yeah. sense bucky never got the serum and neither did steve so uh yeah um yeah, no, and but I also me and uh, so I watched I watched half of these without Ashton because she's been working so much uh, uh-huh. lately, and I needed to be able to talk to you today, so I had to watch them. I had to finish it last night, but we were watching some of it over and watching this episode. I think this was the last episode we watched before we had to stop. But when Bucky Secretary of State Barnes is talking to people about like taking care of Sokovia and like making sure there's money there for roads and schools and like yada yada. And it's like, like, I don't want to like, we're not going to start a civil war in this country and then leave them out to dry. And then it, it, that, that line ended. And I looked at Ashley and said, said never in the American government. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, they don't even I think really of, thought that, yeah they don't even think about us they're like all right we got to send trillions of dollars here yeah. you know support these dude, wars no, i like i thought that was like a really awesome like pointed remark that this mm-hmm. episode said was like they do like really idealize like the american like idea in a way that like we never have truly represented in the history of our country <laughs> no yeah it's yeah th- those ones it's but just, i like yeah. the, but I like the intent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very, wouldn't it be nice? But, uh, but yeah, no, um, no, this episode was cool. And, uh, it was definitely it, it, the fucking, when Rachel Weiss, uh, the Molina character shows up and she's like, wait, you thought you guys like r- reformed him? Mm-hmm. I thought you were, you weren't naive enough to fall for like fantasy, like children's fantasies. That part was fucking hard. Yeah, because yeah, when they went to um, what was it? Because they're they're trying to find the wait, I can't the, the, the yeah when they're trying to find the the red room and they're in like that that fake town. Creepy as shit. Yeah, th- that's how it is in North Korea. They have towns like that. Yeah, yeah. Not I mean, like they, they, 
I mean, we had those towns in 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 the Southwest too. Um, that like that the town where the where the fucking A bomb was built was very similar to that. Okay. Like when when we were when we were testing bombs and whatnot, we had we had tons of of facilities like that that were very very strange and surreal. I think that uh, there's that um, God, what's his face? The guy who made Rushmore and Grand Budapest Hotel, Wes Anderson. That last Wes Anderson movie, I think, is about one of those neighborhoods. Okay, Astro City or whatever. I think what it was called. Maybe I gotta look into I it. I didn't see it. I heard it was good, but I didn't see it. It's got like yeah. Scarlet. It's got like a bunch of white. It's a bunch of white people in the movie. It's the Wes Anderson flick. <laughs> It, it, it is scary because I, you know, back to me being on TikTok, uh, I'll come across like these explorer videos and this guy's like, hey, this this town was abandoned last week. Like, let's walk through the neighborhood. And he like goes into like these houses and like, you know, the grass is still green. There's like furniture and she's like, what? how does a whole neighborhood just get evacuated? Uh, Chemical spills. <laughs> scary. Shit like that. There's I mean, there's there's numbers of fucking. Uh, of American cities and towns and neighborhoods that should have been. There's one up in, I want to say it might be Gary or it's somewhere in Illinois or Northern Indiana that there was a severe chemical contamination in which like one of the areas of town, of course it's where all the the poor people live, Mm -hmm. but like children, like it's like highly advised that children take off their shoes outside of their houses before coming into their houses and never are outside barefoot because they'll get cancer. That's scary. Yeah. It's terrifying. (laughs) And people just live there. People just live there knowing like it's, it's literally going to shave off like 10, 10 to 15 years of their life just living there. But what do you do? People can't afford to move. The people are living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, Where would I, they go if they could? <laughs> yeah, the, I, I can't remember the name of the the city or town or whatever, but um, I, I remember I was uh, in in Wilkes-Barre, and they were telling me about this place that wasn't that far away. That they're yeah, like it's just like Silent Hill, like you, like you can't go there anymore because like there's like police like guarding like the like highway exit or something, um, but like people have like snuck by obviously and like just gone there, and it's just like scary was like, that, that that trips me out because uh, I, I i live in orange county like that like i i don't think anything like that could happen in orange county no, where like keep, the, 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 nobody's nobody's making chemicals that deadly that close to a bunch of rich white people yeah it's it's a trip when i think about stuff like that but no it's pretty crazy but no that town they were in is fucking creepy those robots are very creepy i hated it they they totally got me because i did not think that those robots would attack but then there was that scene where they were you know um on that like platform or whatever and they're like about to kiss or whatever and then Mm -hmm. she gets hit with like a widow bite and then it pans out and you see like all the robots came and like congregated right in front of them and they all started like unleashing like you know the the darts this is crazy yeah pretty cool the way uh the, the way um natasha fucking kills her mom is pretty fucking hard well you know there's a lot of resentment there a lot of you know built up pain yeah. and hatred that part was like that's terrifying to think that your ankles just all of a sudden attached to something and you're just being flown into a exploding sky station you got plenty of time to think about it. It's like the opposite of falling to your death. Yeah, you're like, you know, getting escorted to the yeah. end. Yeah, which pretty dark. You know, w- w- one thing throughout this whole thing is like, I'm reminded of how badass and cool Black Widow is. Oh yeah, because like I, I had like this stain of like her solo film for such a long time. So this was a great refresher for Black Widow for me because I like Black Widow as a character. So this was just a cool. A reminder that hey, she, she's badass. Yeah, no, she's badass, and I mean, even I still like I still stand by the the last or the, her her last movie as not being like a bad one, but I will absolutely co-sign that one moment you pointed out where that APC pulls up, and it looks 
insanely fucking fake. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy that that level of CGI was able to pass. Budget cuts, man. They had to pay her for that streaming. They had to pay her for the streaming. (laughs) It's crazy that that was able to fucking pass with with how good some of that movie looked. It's nuts that that part looks so fucking bad. Yeah, yeah, I can't defend that for a goddamn second. But yeah, no, I'm I I I liked that they did several things. I don't know if you noticed the Avengers moment where all the widows slide and jump through that fence. Okay. I didn't they like that. slow mode it where one of them's going under the fence and a couple of them are going over it and one of them's going through and it's like that slow mo that they do at the beginning of Age of Ultron mm-hmm. when they're all coming over that wall. Yeah. At the same time in different ways. Um there's that and there's also like multiple like recreations like when when she gets thrown up and grabs the Chitari uh like uh sky you know car or whatever. Mm-hmm. Is exactly what she does with with Cap in yeah, like, Avengers, mm-hmm. and that moment where she like goes and fucks up all those Chitari or whatever that was shot for shot redone from Avengers, and um, I really I don't know that the Captain Carter part too when they're running away from the Hydra Stomper on the on the ship, and Black Widow goes over that railing and Captain Carter goes through it. Through, oh, and she like goes like yeah, she like spins through. Yeah, I was I was like, oh, that's another moment we've seen Cap do that. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was very I was very pleased with a lot of the little like uh, visual Easter eggs that they put in um, in these things. And you know, I'm, I'm I'm a fan of of Captain Carter. I th- I thought that through all the episodes that she's been in, uh, she's one of my favorite parts of the what if series is i just think she looks tight she looks fucking she looks like she kicked my fucking ass it's awesome <laughs> yeah um and even uh when we think back to uh dr strange multiverse of madness uh when she pops up i thought she looked badass mm-hmm. in there too oh yeah no she looks great i'm uh i'm very psyched on that but yeah and then this one ends with fucking the 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 <laughs> that probably another like truly amazing comedic moment was given to jeffrey Wright in this episode when he's trying to do his like outro, like I'm the watcher, I see all and mm-hmm. yada, yada. And he goes, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, that part's awesome. Yeah. I love, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get to it when, uh, you know, there's interactions with the watcher and certain people. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, next one is the very left field episode. Yeah. This one, I was scratching my head thinking, am I, I out of the loop who the fuck is Cowry Gowry or however you say it. So I had to look because I was just so confused. I was like, w- did I miss something? But come to find out this was uh, her debut. This is something um, added to the universe. So um, I didn't miss anything. This wasn't um, yeah. you know, me not knowing going into this. Uh, you know, I wasn't like missing uh you know like a new comic book runner i think this was like literally her debut into the marvel universe that's pretty cool i thought she looked dope yeah yeah and i uh loved that uh she you know stood up for her people right because um, well in ugh, the way they fucking worked it into like the lore of like the fountain of youth and shit mm-hmm and like using it as like the when when Surtur fucking like explodes fucking Asgard like I like that like as like the origin point for the story mm-hmm. and it's just sending the Tesseract off that was just that was so cool to like do some I'm I'm I love the fucking um the fucking Assassin's Creed games okay for the specific way that they like work in like biblical and mythical like history into real world history so they're working like the conquistadors looking for the fountain of youth fountain of youth that was so cool yeah <laughs> and it's, it's i was just so happy to see them i was like we're skipping around here but it was just so awesome to see the conquistadors get their asses kicked right because they yeah. they show up and you know they're they're just messing with like you know these people who aren't trying to have war obviously they're they're guarding the secret of this fountain of youth and they don't even look at it as the fountain of youth they look at it as this dangerous thing that the they're curse, trying to yeah. yeah that they're trying to keep people like away from uh so it, it was just very nice to see uh them get beat up but okay but going back to 
uh, you know, them searching for the fountain youth, then obviously uh, uh, Gary gets shot, falls into the fountain youth, and then she gets sucked through the Tesseract portal to the sky world, which seemed like a very nice place, right? You, you go oh, there, yeah, dog. Uh, you get all these powers, you live off the mm-hmm. land, and you, you get stronger that way. Like, y- you're just one with the world. It's all nice and peaceful. But I just love that she she realized, like, yo, like, as nice as everything is, like, like the portal's still open. So, like, like we're not trapped here, but it, it seems like this is just a very nice prison. Like, this is cool and all, but I don't want to stay here. Like, our people are, are getting... In trouble. A, yeah, our people are getting attacked, and we need to go help them. So, I'm not going to be like all of you and be content with just living in this nice place. I want to tr- try to find a way to get back. And yeah, no, it's very noble. I, uh, it's very cool. And I like the, um, it really, it, I mean, connecting it to like real world, um, like events and whatnot, it really struck me similarly to like people who like the difference between like people who like immigrate to America and find like prosperity here and are able to like flourish and be fine yet then can turn around and like want to close the door on people behind them Mm -hmm. rather than keeping it open for like other people to come through and like enjoy and be safe and have the same opportunities they had. They somehow see like other people like coming here as like then now taking away from their experience. And I like the idea that like she went through and was like, no, like we need to share this power that we've got. We've got, we need to use this now to like help more people have the same ability of safety and, and like, I don't know, like, like prosperity that we're having. And that was cool. I, uh, I, I like her character. She's, I agree. she's based. I really like that when she brought the she, right she she got the port the sky portal down to, to ground level and I like that mm-hmm. when she was making her her speech she said yo like I'm going back to save our people and for anyone who doesn't come with me like you guys don't deserve these powers and, and then they was, all come <laughs> yeah it took them a while I I was convinced that they weren't <laughs> coming because you know obviously she was uh, seems like the mo- the most powerful out of the bunch so when she showed up and was you know uh, you know wrecking shop um uh. And then when finally when when, when there's like that shot right where they like you know the, like the woods with like all the blue eyes i was like oh thank god everybody came over um so it was, it was cool it was, it was just great to see like you know i i just love the stories right where there's like that one uh you know bold person stands up and just inspires everybody and you mm-hmm. know like now they just have like this uh you know collective growth and positive change it was just a like cool story not anything that i was expecting but you know uh, i just really enjoyed the story and I was also surprised that, okay, like that Carrie was like going to be a key character later on. Cause I thought this was just yeah. one and done. Like, we're I thought moving it was on. a one off. Yeah. Like the Nebula one. Yeah. No, I yeah. thought it was like the Nebula one too. Um, I do love that she went and fucked up the Queen of Spain, though. That was awesome. Yes. And, and yo, yo <laughs> Queen Isabella was a bitch. And yeah. I, I just Royal like, cunt. <laughs> yeah. I, I just like she's like I'm not scared of your magic, and then as soon as she gets lifted up, she you know uh, starts to realize like oh shit, this is like yeah. th- this is real, like we're in danger. But 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 I like that they went and we're like yo, like we need to you know like live in peace together, mm-hmm. like we need each other, you know, like if if you do good, we do good type shit. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean that's and that's the thing is like extermination isn't the isn't the path to peace. Yeah, because existence is. Yeah, because they could have easily. Por- they portaled in killed, and killed yeah. every yeah killed everybody yeah and i but it's 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 funny to me like i like that because it's like there's there's a difference between justice and retribution and like i think that holding people accountable and like shaming them <laughs> and making them like work off their uh their like trespass or their transgressions against somebody is very is very different than just wanting an eye for an eye Mm. like the ability for somebody to earn the earn forgiveness rather than just like 
nothing's solved when nothing's solved when somebody murders someone you care about and then you murder them. Yeah. You've now you you've now done the thing, the bad thing. You they they got you to do the bad thing. Yeah. Like you're just continuing the cycle. Yeah. You're the same as them now. Mm -hmm. And I really like that like showcasing of, you know, like you're gonna respect another people even if it's against your will even if it's begrudgingly you're going to um and then that attitude might die with you like the next generation actually has a hope for seeing the like these people as people i mean it's very similar to like how like gay rights happened in america like our grandparents would have been completely resistant to accepting of that kind of stuff mm -hmm. in this country and then their kids are a little more accepting and then we are even more mm -hmm. that's how that happens that attitude dies with the generation before and just so long as people as, as that generation isn't allowed to repress those people out of existence um progress rolls through if you want to get in the way then get ready to get run over man because it's 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 the way mankind goes we will we will keep moving without you and you can be left behind and that's awesome if you if that's where you want to be yeah but you can also just get on the fucking train and and move towards acceptance and coexistence it's fucking way easier and way less exhausting promise you yeah 100 percent. and uh you know and i've said this before but it's like yeah like never in my life have i ever thought like you know being gay was like bad or anything like i never cared like that so i get it's it not my fucking business yeah it is, so I, I was getting like you know I, I always trip out and get confused when like you know where like people like hate it and it's just like you know you're like yeah they're still on that damn I yeah it's, it's like it's like it's 2024 fam like come on <laughs> let's figure it out <laughs> but yeah but that episode ends with uh dr strange supreme uh yeah he's like oh going up to recruit her he was like, uh, he's like, this is a world record of world peace <laughs> or like the yeah. fastest, like, you know, you, you know, anyone's reached world peace. Yeah, very cool. Next episode was pretty nuts. You know, I was disappointed. Really? Only because there was no Shang-Chi. <laughs> yeah, but this is way before he was born. Was I remember his dad was like fucking centuries old. See, I, I get jumbled with the timeline. Yeah, this happens when he's still like leading like armies in China. Okay, that makes way more sense now. Yeah, he wasn't this 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 is so far from modern time. Yeah, this is shortly after the the fucking nine realms conquest that Odin's gone on. Yeah, and he was he, he was chilling off the 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 nine realms. Hello, wanted more. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, I thought uh, I was I was multiple things. Fucking shocked that they got Kate Blanchett to come back. <laughs> Yo, money talks, bro. Money talks. For one of these episodes of, the, of the, <laughs> the cartoon, and I was pretty fucking thrilled they got so many of the people from from Shang Chi to come back. That's cool. Yeah respect i i feel like yeah to, and the, things like that it's like okay like obviously like like the money's right or they love their character enough to, mm -hmm. to want to still be attached to it like that's them i don't know but yeah i mean this episode though is like for i mean i'm assuming if anybody's listening to us fucking talk about this they've probably fucking watched it but for like a refresher on this episode it's what happens in the first thor movie but it's happening to Hela instead. Mm -hmm. And she lands in Shang-Chi's backstory. Yeah, because I was at least like, his dad's backstory. Yeah, because for anyone who's seen Shang-Chi, she goes through some things that he went through, like, you know, running through the bamboo forest where it was like, you know, the, the death race to get out. Mm -hmm. or, or Shang-Chi was trying to get in, but uh, Hela was trying to get out. Um, and th there was like a very specific, you know, time where it was open. And if it, uh, you know, if you're not out by then, like, you know, it closes and you die. And yo, I'm just going to go ahead and say this in this world, Shang-Chi. You realize that Shang-Chi's mother. Is going to be Hela. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Because they're definitely getting together at the end of this. Yo, because he was courting her from the very beginning. He was like, yo. Yeah, which I love that. That, that was still consistent. That his his dude. Okay. The best part of Shang-Chi is still his fucking dad. Which part of his dad? His dad. His dad's story. Just the love okay. that he had for his mother and the love that he and, and just how lonely he was. With all of his power, that like the thing that turned him dark and made him bad was grief. Mm -hmm. And I just, I love that they like really nailed where his character's headspace was at the point in time that Hella enters this story. That he is really just looking for somebody, a fighter. Yeah, he don't want any old girl. He wants somebody with with that who can fuck him up. Yeah, he's he he needs to be domed a little bit, I guess. But uh, but he's just so he's so love lost and love lorn that I just I thought that was awesome because it was really cool seeing like how he treated Hell. It was very similar to the way we saw him and in Shang Chi's mother um, like yeah. fall in fall in love and bond. I thought that was very cool. So in my in my head, this fucking version of this like shang chi's half god in that in that universe that timeline in that timeline yeah he's half god and half white i guess too but <laughs> um as guardian or, or no yeah yeah half as guardian yeah no so like i honestly like if we're talking any of these if they green light a third season of what if i want to see a continuation on this when we get to the end, I'll tell you my, my one gripe with it. Okay. Okay. The end of talking about this episode? Yeah. Well, well I mean, let's, let's, let's get there. Because I thought the end when she's in the fucking white suit and she finally shows mercy to her father and the helmet just comes to her because she's done the right thing for the first point in time. Because she's such a fucking bitch this whole episode. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's what I didn't like. It's like, okay, if, you know, for as evil as she was before she, you know, got her powers taken from Odin, she doesn't have to like pay for any of that. She can just be like, okay, like I'm, I'm good now. I, I Thor saw didn't either. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not a bachelor Thor either. But also, but she went through that, you know, I, I think her going through that training in Tao Lao. Mm -hmm. is like taught her enough it's like well it's like like learning like you can learn a bunch of shit but until you see how it applies to things like it's very different than like like you can learn physics or you can learn chemistry and then until you're like actually applying that knowledge or applying that like um that understanding of how something works once she like applied that and then finally understood what it is to like walk the path of peace and want to protect people rather than like put people under your control. Cause she also finally like when, when that, that was so cool when, uh, when Shang-Chi's mom's talking to her and is like, what are you actually trying to do? I love that. Mm -hmm. and, and she tells like, her the truth, right? Yeah. She gets, yeah. And she tells, well, she tells her what she's been telling people. Yeah. But then but she, she gets... tells her father, and she says, but what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What are you actually trying to do? And then when she gets all the way back to the root of it, like I like she 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 made her go to therapy. That's yeah. it. But also no thanks either. Because like we don't get to see them interact when she leaves to go fight no. Odin. And maybe maybe we will. Or maybe there's it's not even necessary because maybe you don't need this. Maybe the thanks you can give somebody is going on living your life differently. Stealing her husband and her kid. She doesn't know that. She never even met that fool. But we know that. We're the watchers. No, it's a different world, dog. It's a different um, universe. That kid's going to be way crazier now. Yeah. But she was a G, though. She, like, suited up with, with like, the, the dragon scale. And that was a cool fight scene when, when they took on Odin. I, I thought that was pretty sick. Yeah. Like, when she took up, uh, when she's like, oh, like, like flame daggers or whatever. And she was like, mm -hmm. that was. That okay. part was, that was a good payoff. That was a good, yeah. uh, a Chekhov's uh, um, flaming knife. Yeah, um, that was that one. That that part was good. I uh, yeah, no, I like this one. This one was really left field for me, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm a fan of anything Shang Chi. So to to see them get some some light. Me too. 
Yeah, I was, oh, I was, yeah. I was, I was shocked they they dug into that stuff. So when they when they did, I was I was pretty, I was pretty excited yeah. for it. And we have the last wait, 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 Sorry, before we move on, I just want to shout out Heimdall too. It just ill. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love Heimdall. I, I love that fucking character. So he's a G, dude. I, I want to see more of uh more of um, fucking uh Valhalla. I want to see more of Valhalla and who else is chilling. Yeah, well, Thor needs a reboot. We need to reboot Thor. <laughs> Who would play Thor in a reboot? Fuck anybody. I don't care. I just every Thor is just like, ugh, this is like such a chore to get through. We'll see. Maybe they'll nail it in the next one, or maybe we'll they'll, they'll never make another one. Yeah. I'd be okay with never making another one because if you, you I know, think if, four's enough if we're at if we're being honest. Yeah, because I, I don't want to get into that territory where all right, let's start. Let's do, uh, you know, the first Avengers again. Let's start all over. It's like no, like like I like where we're at. Continuing, I, yeah. yeah. Let's just let's just go forward. Like it, it, it you know, it, it was like not the best. Whatever we we got through it. Let's just push forward for better times. More superheroes. We don't need to try to go back and fix every mistake because there's a lot of them. No, for sure. Um. Are you ready to do the last two episodes? Yes. I feel like we may as well just talk about them both in one because it's it's all connected. Okay. What a weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a fan of the era, but it was just like, all right, like now I'm having to like, like kind of just like, okay, superheroes in this time doesn't really make the most sense to me, but let me try to get into it because because uh, obviously it's two things that I like, but I just don't know if I would like them together. It was very strange episode to parse out like what's going on. Like I, I found it very I was also like very tired when I was watching this at like one o'clock in the morning last night. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it was very hard for me at, at a moment to pass to parse out like are are all the superheroes like out in the open? like living with normal people like everybody's just like aware because hella is queen i guess or being treated like queen and this is court and yeah and she obviously had a scepter there's these weird riffs yeah that some yeah. of these people are people some of these people are superheroes they're all just kind of like hanging out like yeah it, you know it took me a while to realize that uh that or who happy hogan was in that me too because i was like i was like who's this guy that's just so respected and seems like he's like a general and then come to find yeah. out it's fucking happy hogan i'm like oh shit yeah like they called him like sir hogan at one point and i was like oh okay that's happy i was yeah. like I, I think i think this is the first one where i was just like i was more i mean it could have also contributed to the fact that i was awake so late but I was more confused by aspects of this one than other ones where like other ones, I just kind of got what they were doing mm -hmm. when this one, I feel like I was having to like figure things out too. Yeah. And I felt a little like one step behind the story at all times. Like I was always kind of catching up. I, it was really scary to see how quickly everyone just turned on captain carter right because they're like all right oh yeah uh, thor odin sons of the new leader and he's like all right she, uh you know she she didn't uh, do what she came here to do she's the reason like my, my sister got taken get her he really blamed the immigrant for what was going on yeah and i was like <laughs> oh my god that's so scary because like that's how i'm sure things happened back then just point yeah. the finger yeah get I mean, yo she's a witch and then they just drowned them <laughs> yeah, that was just like, oh, crap, because like imagine her, too. Right. She was brought there to help out. And now she's being like prosecuted, you know, getting chased and wanting to get captured by the fucking new king or whatever. Yeah, I really did like that. Loki was just trying to like re rehash all Shakespeare's Shakespeare, stories. Yeah. Because yeah, every scene he's just chatting up these girls. Like, he's like, oh, there's a new play being written or whatever. Yeah. And there's being like the most insufferable high schooler like 
you knew that guy who's like just always talking about film and cinema. Mm -hmm. I say this on a podcast with my friend where we're talking about a comic book cartoon, but neither of us is doing this to try to get laid. No. (laughs) No. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Um, Dude, fucking uh, straight up though. Rogers Hood. Yes, when really made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, because when they're like, "All right, like we we gotta hire a thief," and I was like, "Okay," and then when like it's like you know Loki in the carriage, and then you see them swinging in, and I'm like, "Okay, Robin Hood," but then when they reveal well, who it, I also saw, um, I saw Paul Rudd's name, and when they said we need a thief, I was like, "Oh, it's gonna be Ant Man," mm-hmm. and then when it was when they said Rogers Hood, I was like, "Oh, of course he would be the good guy." I was yeah. I was like, "Oh, I was so thrilled." That, was, yeah. that threw me for a loop. Yeah, and also it, it, was, it was cool to see Scott Lang again too, right? Mm-hmm. Great, great character, and it's, it's the same Scott Lang from our time, or, you know, but the same yeah. character, but you know, in like that, uh, you know, uh, Elizabeth uh, era. Uh, yeah, no, it was it was very good. I thought it was funny, and, and then the the story was cool. I, I I thought this one, and I guess actually no, we can talk about these in separate. I forgot, like. I guess I watched them back to back and they are so connected that I thought it was kind of one long story. Yeah, well, it's it just really Captain does. Carter kind of. She's the. Yeah, but it really is kind of contained in this episode. Yeah, but dude, B- Bucky's fucking automatic uh, crossbow was cool. Good old Bucky. Yeah, it, it, it was just nice to see a younger version of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, I thought this one was good. And then. Yeah, I mean, the way it ends with you finding out that Steve was the first one over that, you know, I just didn't like that he knew what, you know, Captain Carter was doing, right? Uh, Trying to find. He didn't remember. He didn't remember? He didn't remember. It was one once once she like once they got the contraption fueled, Uh he went he and he turned green. He was like. I remember what happened now. Oh, I, I guess I missed fighting. that because I thought he was he hiding was like, it the whole time. No, he starts to be like, I was fighting this guy. And then he starts describing Thanos in the fight with Thanos. And we see him yeah, in he Infinity cuts, War with yeah. the, the shield, like the, the arm shield or whatever. And you and see him when he's going to punch him. Thanos cuts the time stone. The gauntlet up yeah. And he hits the, uh, the time stone. And oh, see, it. yeah. I thought he just knew the whole time was just trying to be no, low key. He didn't remember until until the machine came on and it, it basically outed him. He was like, "I now remember that I." Like, oh my bad, it was me. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no, you're good. I just watched. I just watched the last night, dog. So, <laughs> but um, but but I was happy too that he made the hard decision, right? Because even you know Captain Carter mm-hmm. was she. She was like, "Oh God, I found you, but I don't want to lose you again." But he's like, "Nah." He's like, "We need to do this." So he pushes, you know, the he pushes the button himself. Yeah. That was Damn. hard. That part was sad. That, you know, that part really got it's me. like like throughout this whole season, like I know that she's longing for like her Steve, but I just I just think back to Endgame where I'm like, okay, I know that they that they get their you know their in happy one, ending. in one timeline, yeah. Yeah. So it's just like I was like, you've been through all this, but don't worry. There's a timeline out there where you guys are he you know, he gets that dance and it's all good. Yeah, very good. Um I'm trying to think of oh and shout out to uh, I love that they have this you know Tony Stark he's you know maybe drinking a little too much yep. but still is able to pull it off it's still yeah. super smart and he doesn't know any of the shit yeah either. He, he's like, like tell me these crazy words <laughs> she's like arc she's reactor like flex <laughs> yeah. and he's like he's like oh I love it <laughs> yeah it was it was great I um love it oh and then even uh you know Hulk making an, an appearance yeah. Was, well, okay. Oh, oh and, and this is what I want to talk about. Okay, so, um, you know, Hulk makes an appearance, but what I was trying to figure out and understand is how does Happy Hogan? How does he Happy have powers. his? Yeah, how does he have his Hulk form back then? Because obviously the holiday episode to well, because he's pulled from the future. They said it's the modern time and sixteen oh two are mm-hmm. folding in on each other, like two pages stuck together. Together, yeah. So they're like, like Steve crossed over, but then couldn't remember. Mm-hmm. You've got other people crossing over and they can't remember either. So he was one of the ones that crossed over. Yeah. So he's, he must be one of the ones that they crossed over. Yeah. Too. Cause when Steve cut his cut, cut like the 
quill or whatever on his hat. And he was like, oh, shit. I was like, well, okay, why is that such a big deal? This guy is like, yeah. doesn't have they'd power. They said it earlier. They'd said, don't make him angry when uh, when uh, uh, Bucky was shooting at him. Mm-hmm. They were like, don't make Sir Hogan ma- like don't, mad, like whatever you do. Yeah. And then, yeah. Like, yes, like, I just thought it was just like a line. I didn't think it was like alluding to him having mm-hmm. his powers. But when he when turned, I heard that, I was like, I was like, ooh. Because also, uh, he like yells at one point and you see like a purple thing mm-hmm. up, up on his neck. And I went, oh, okay. It's, it's the one that turns into a monster. Yeah. And I, I wish I would have given him a name or like, you know, because obviously, like, you know, Bruce Banner and the Hulk, but it's like Happy Hogan and what? He's just a purple guy. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Is this the purple guy? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so that one ends and Strange Supreme. Uh, he's, I, you know, okay, because remember, there's the, there's the scene at, at, at uh, the, the other episode where Peggy is like kind of sulking in the bar and then Steven shows mm-hmm. up and he's just like, hey, like, need your help. Yeah. And yeah, I'm like, watching the episode like how did this guy even get to live after all like the crazy shit he did in season one i was like this guy should have yeah. been somebody should have killed him but w- when they're touring um I, I forgot the the name of his um a new the sanctum and sanctum infinitum yeah and you're just like all right this looks pretty crazy and then you know carter Captain carter asked him oh are you here alone and then he's like shows off like all like the people that he's like captured like these like universe killers or whatever like oh this guy is crazy he just has like ultron just chilling and like these little like you know like glass case things it's just like this guy's out of his mind yeah he's got his little uh collection like uh like cabin in the woods style in their little in their little cubes yeah and I, you know, I believed him until uh, you find out who 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 she has to fight. Down. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you're like, no, she's not evil. And then, yeah. and then at that point, I'm like, oh my god, she got hoodwinked. She's this is bad. Like you got to listen to uh, Gowrie. And when they go back, because obviously, like you know, he uh, sets the teleport, and you know, he's like, thank you for like you know bringing her or whatever. And then you're like, you know, obviously. Uh, Captain Carter doesn't know what the hell's going on. She's never seen Gary, Gary before, so she's like kind of like stuck. Like, what the hell do I do? But then she finally realizes, like, oh shit! Like, he's it's bad. Not just universe killers; it's heroes too. Yeah, and this is all. And this is all. You know, and it brings and it all he's the way back. Burn them. <laughs> he, he's yeah. He, he's trying to sacrifice all of them to bring back his universe, so he can, you know, try to get back to um, the hell's his girlfriend's name? I can't think of her name. Uh, Christine. Yeah, so he he can get back to Christine and you're like, wow, when, when, when you think about like, like the people that he just named, you're like, oh crap, he, he captured a lot of high level crazy killers. But then when Captain Carter had no choice, right? Cause she couldn't affect, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Strange or Sorcerer Supreme when he was uh, trying to, you know, capture Gary. Um, she's like, all right, fuck it. Like, I got to just do something crazy. So when she throws her shield and releases all like these like, universe killers and it's just like this all out war, you're like, oh, crap, that that is a crazy move. Um, I I was just so like surprised that she did that, but she had no other choice. And it was a, a yeah, definitely but a crazy- also she uh, it, skipping ahead, but she unleashes the weapons to use against Strange as well. Yeah, OK. So when, um, you know, she, uh, uh, you know, releases all the people, obviously, like, every show's fighting, Strange is like, oh, shit, like, I gotta, uh, you know, try to, like, uh, contain all this so um, they're able to escape. And Gary has the idea, she's like, okay, we have to go destroy the Forge so he can't sacrifice these people. And there's the scene where they run into Killmonger. I was like, oh, shit, this is so sick, because uh, that character's just badass. But then, like, Gary just, like, <laughs> she just destroys him so fast. She yeah. just she's just like, all right, she's, I'm gonna teleport you out of your suit. Yeah. No, he, dude, her her powers are fucking awesome. I really like like the 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 Tesseract powers that she gets are incredibly imaginative, but also still like make sense within like the the context, I guess, of what we know the Tesseract can do. Mm-hmm. The writing in the season is pretty fucking good. Yeah, hundred percent. There wasn't anything that I like. Absolutely, was like, no, that was dog shit, or I hated it. It was no, well, like, like th- that many holes, I guess, too. Mm-hmm. Like in like logic, which was it was all pretty sound. Um, but goddamn, dude, when they are just 
<laughs> when they're like strapping up for the fight, it's so nuts. Yeah, what, what, when you well, when, when you think, um, what's her name? She gets like the the Killmonger armor with the yep. Infinity Stones. You're like, okay, because it's then Hela's helmet too. Yeah, she, th- th- that looked kind of goofy on her. <laughs> it did, but it was funny. It was it was pretty silly. It was like it reminded me of like when you're playing with your toys as a kid and you like put all the accessories on one toy. Okay, yeah. The, there was this scene where I was like, you know, where doctor or supreme is like you know he summons everybody to go to the forge to die right so they're yeah. falling and then gary's like nope i'm gonna set, shoot him back up so then they go back and they're going like it's just like you know an <laughs> elevator i was like can you imagine if you're one of those people you're like i'm gonna die no i'm okay no i'm gonna die it's just like i would have been so stressed <laughs> in that moment if i was one of those people yeah no it's very funny um yeah no i thought uh it was a crazy ending for yeah. for the season it, it it was and it was also kind of sad too right because oh you know, it's depressing because you know dr strange he, he he just dabbled a, a little too far in the dark and magic he was still in there yeah he was because at the end in the end when it was like when the, the demon, monster yeah. was mm-hmm. when the demon was like when they were coming down he was pulling it down yeah he was like he's like yo like w- this is the self-sacrifice you know he it was just so sad because you know all he wanted was his his, his love, right? And he got her back though, but he didn't get to have her. Yeah, I thought that was kind of like dark. That like Captain Carter and um, uh, the Watcher were just just on a bridge, just watching from across the park. They're like, yeah, she's back. We're we're in like you know this uh, timeline that he worked so hard, did you know obviously a lot of bad stuff to make happen, mm-hmm. but he doesn't even get to enjoy it. It wasn't worth. Well, I, I don't know. Was it worth it? Like he it's he brought her his Christine back, but like. I mean, it matters if it, her life mattered more than more than him. If her life mattered more to him than his. Mm-hmm. And I think it did. Yeah, because he went far to try to bring her back. And yeah. Yeah. And I mean, at, at that point, I don't think he he if he had been able to bring her back, he wouldn't have been the same person either. Yeah. But th- if, if you think back to, to that one scene where he was trying to use, you know, uh, Captain Carter's like, you know, Steve trauma against her. He's like, what would Steve do? And she would, you know, she, she popped in and was like blocking with the show. She's like, he wouldn't want me to do this. Like, I was like, okay, yeah. hell yeah. That's like, you know, she's able to think clearly, right? Because she almost got yep. suckered. Because I mean, there's like that whole butterfly scene, mm-hmm. which like, yeah, like, obviously, like, obviously it was like not real. But then when you see like the butterfly in the back and he's like, I love you. You're like, oh, this is not even real. And she's like, yep. She's like, she's like, this isn't real. And she punches him. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think I asked this at one point when we were talking about something, but very similar. But in the first season, I fuck, cause we never talked about what if, but that episode where he's trying to, I know, I've, I think I may, may have brought it up when we were talking about just some other, um movie or tv show but that episode where he's trying to bring christine back have you ever seen the time machine with guy pierce no it's based on the um fuck the hg wells book it's called the time machine yeah it's pretty good movie um it scared the shit out of me as a kid okay but it it involves like though like it's crazy because hg wells wrote you know there's like one of the the or the origins of science fiction uh-huh. writing period and he he came up with something that still gets used which are points in time that are fixed that can't be changed and one of the one of the things that is incorporated into that that movie with guy pierce i don't know if it's in the book too so i never read the book but i i, th- I think i would like to because i do like the movie enough um Guy Pierce's character is a scientist trying to build a time machine or working with within the theories of time travel. And his fiance, I believe, is like killed. So he gets like completely driven to like get, you know, travel through time and save her. And every time he saves her and prevents her from being killed one way, she's killed an increasingly terrible way. And that is what that episode of What If is doing. It's H.G. Wells's time machine is what they're telling with uh, with that Doctor Strange story. Um, 
if you enjoyed that episode of What If, you'd probably like the time machine with Guy Pierce. <laughs> okay. Can I make a time uh, travel movie recommendation? Let's fucking go. Have you heard of Project Almanac? Yes. Okay. I've never seen it, but I've heard of it. Okay. It's not Is like that. It's, it's not like it's a, it's it's a it's a low budget guy, right? Um, I think it was like a I, th- I thought it was like an MTV movie, but um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was it wasn't like a major. <laughs> uh, who directed that? Um, I'm looking at it right now. Who directed this movie? Uh, I'm just looking at the cast. Let me pull up the IMDb. Dean Israelite. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's the guy who directed the the Power Rangers movie. Um, yeah. that failed, but I actually liked because I'm a sucker for shit like that. Um, yeah, no, I've, I've heard about it because of him directing that, that Power Rangers movie. I think Project Almanac is why he, he got the Power Rangers movie because people actually like Project Almanac and it was made on like, I think a low enough budget. I think, I think people actually like that movie. Yeah, no, I, I enjoyed I it. Um, uh, yeah, cause basically it's like these, <sighs> this kid, right? He, uh, his, his, basically his, his dad um, like worked for like the CIA whatever dad dies um, and he uh, you know, gets left like some some stuff and like he finds out that his dad was actually working on a time machine <laughs> and then him and his friends actually and this is not like the biggest spoiler alerts whatever um, him and his friends actually like complete what his dad was doing but then it's just like like these are like high schoolers that have a time machine and they're trying to, you know, like they establish like these like very strict rules about the time machine. Uh, but then they're like getting to see like benefits from the time machine. But then also there's mm-hmm. like that, you know, with that butterfly effect. Right. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like um, they, they, they kind of start to realize that, that they can't have it all. So then they start going through like there's like like, you know, pr- some pretty intense like situations. Um, really fun. But then even at the end, you're just kind of like, what the fuck? It makes you think because like it's not like it's not so crazy like um uh what's that one movie uh, that people still talk about to this day with leo is it leo is that one? Oh, uh um inception yeah Maybe. it's not that crazy but at the end it's just kind of like there's like it makes you think but really fun movie yeah i've i've definitely I've, i think i've seen the um like the thumbnail for it on streaming services i'll fucking i'll throw it on on a list i'll fucking watch that shit i love i, I love shit dog okay <laughs> All right. All right. Well, what if season two, that was a, that, that, that was definitely a nice treat. Um, yeah. We haven't talked about Echo. I don't know. Did you, have you watched Echo? I haven't watched it yet. Okay. So we'll, we'll have to talk about that soon. Have you watched it yet? I watched the first episode. Okay. I heard, uh, I saw like on all the, the problematic YouTubes that they are saying it's trash and woke and terrible. So I'm sure I'll like it. Okay. Yeah. First episode wasn't <laughs> bad. Um, okay, so all right, so we'll, we'll do an Echo one. We'll we'll plan that out in in the future. But like for this year, like the only movie that we have is Deadpool and Wolverine. I, I, I'm sure you saw it. it. Looks like it's gonna be so fucking good. Yes, this is this is our <laughs> redemption arc, right? All the shit that we've had to put up with the Marvels. Yes, this is it, right? So everyone who's jumped off, even though, even though I did not hate the Marvels. No, same here. Me, I, 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 I liked hate, it. Uh, what What have the last few movies we've talked been? The Marvels, Guardians. Guardians was awesome. Guardians. Because uh, we, we, we okay, it was cool. Last year it was good, or it was bad to start off with Ant Man, and then we had. Good it wasn't Gar- bad, well, but it wasn't as good. Yeah, we we were supposed wasn't, to. If Ant Man three wasn't as good as Ant Man two, which wasn't as good as Ant Man one, but wasn't bad. Yeah, it's just it's it just, just the worst of the trilogy. As good as a movie that also wasn't as good as another. <laughs> yeah, so I, I felt like yeah, we were like alternating because like yeah, it wasn't like yeah. the hottest, but Guardians three was so good, mm-hmm. and then Marvels right, it was good. It was, it, it was a, yeah, it was, it was fine. Fun. Yeah, it was fun. But yeah, but here we are. The our, our first like movie, the only movie of 2024. We're gonna. Like, have it fun. looks like it's gonna be so good. I watched the trailer so many times when it dropped. <sighs> yes, I, and I was like, when the TVA show up to his apartment, that's where I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, it's fucking on. This is we're gonna correct course. We're gonna fix some shit. Yeah, and I, I watched. Uh, I watched a couple of the Screen Crush guy talking about like breaking down the trailer and different like things that are 
getting pointed out in it, mm-hmm. one of which is the uh the Secret Wars comic, comic book. Yeah. Being there. Well, wow, we'll get there. We'll get there. We basically had- telling us Doctor Doom is gonna be he's he's coming, guys. He's <laughs> he's fucking coming. Um, but uh I he he made a point, the screen crush guy made a point about Deadpool that I think I think it's missed by everybody who wants to make fun of Deadpool for being like or or I guess like pass it off like it's just like all the other Marvel movies, like it's just like the quippy Joss Whedon stuff. It's something completely different than mm-hmm. that. Cause and the thing that he said, which I agree with, because I think I'm this way too, because given all the morbid shit going on in, in the world all the time and how angry I am all the time, I do make jokes about it because it's the only thing I can do mm-hmm. is laugh about things that are happening that are terrible and how like that device of dealing with trauma or um, you know bad shit is what is what Wade Wade Wilson does because he does care a lot. Yeah. Because he has like a lot of heart and there's and and there's a lot of sad things that happen in Deadpool. Dude, he was on Death's door. Yes. And and I think and and when when it all gets laid out to you like that and you kind of like real that's that's the reason why I think he's such a relatable character. Mm -hmm. Um beyond all the people who like him who have never had any kind of hardship in their lives or are you know fucking annoying to be honest like i get a lot of people wearing deadpool merch are annoying Mm -hmm. but uh beyond all that that's no reason to like i guess hate on the character in the stories because i do think those first fucking two deadpool movies are so awesome yeah and i i feel like we gotta uh you know give it up to ryan reynolds too because he's one of those actors that he has a passion for this character that he's playing right yeah. he, he's not just like oh i went and you know, got sent to scripts like no this is something that he went out of his way to be like yo like we need to make this happen he's been fighting for deadpool yeah. for years so i'm 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 happy that it's successful i'm happy that uh you know we, we're getting another one and it's, it seems like this is going to be like you know like a, a turning point and it's in the, I'm glad we're getting it. And it's like stylized exactly like the other ones. Yes. Disney uh, and, Mar- you know, Kevin Feige, he, he recognized that, like, we can't try to mess with this. We have to let it be like when he's getting suited up and then you see like the slap on the ass. Well, even awesome. when he talks about uh, uh, when the guy, uh, you know, from the TV pulls out his like his like baton and he's talking about, you know, being pegged. And, yeah. And it's like, he's oh. Like, it's like, it, like, I'm not new to this. Yeah. <laughs> um, he gets pegged in like the was it the first one or something? I can't remember. Yes, it's the first one, I think. Um, but there's that. He, he says pegging. That's new for Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, or that's new for, for Disney, Disney or something yeah. like that, which is such a funny fucking thing to say. But there's that. And then just also like uh, the um, the splits, the getting up out of the splits on the fucking elevator, like mm-hmm. those little things, those little moments that just like. I think just like keep it so snappy and not snappy in the Joss Whedon way, but like snappy in the way like music has a beat and mm. like, I don't know, I, I, I'm i I'm very excited for it. Like that, those couple like shots in the trailer and how just how catchy it is watching all the sequences and the fucking slow motion reload of the guns is just, yeah. It looks fucking cool, dude. It looks fucking cool. I don't give a shit. It's awesome. Mm. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see Hugh Jackman. Dude, the, the, the fact that they don't even show Hugh Jackman in the trailer, you know, yeah. or like well, that we can actually see. Obviously, we see the shadow. Yeah. But the fact that that's like, you know. Also, did you catch the uh, the planes, trains and automobiles um, reference? No. When he's laying on the ground and he's like, can you help me up? And then you see the claws go out and he goes, no, 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 no I'm good. Actually, that's in planes, trains and automobiles. When uh, he um, Steve Martin gets knocked in front of the car, okay. or he's pushed in front of the car, and John Candy goes, "Won't you help him up?" And he goes, "My pleasure." And he puts on his glove and he picks Steve Martin up by the nuts. Um, <laughs> right before he grabs it, Steve Martin's like, "No, no, no, no!" <laughs> that part, I was, I, I saw it and I was like, "That's a plain strange and automobiles reference." I, 
it's pretty pretty fucking good that's awesome yeah there's a so many things that's why the, that movie is fun too because like he's he's like able to break like the fourth wall and recognize that he's like in like a he's like in a marvel universe right because yeah. the only other person that's been able to do that was uh she hulk mm-hmm. so well i uh i've seen people like theorizing like deadpool can see the different universes like he can already see through the veil like that's what makes him special mm-hmm. like he can see us and he can see the fact that there's other other universes that exist somehow something's different about him and um when he's talking to us and everybody else thinks he's crazy like he's actually just like seeing things that nobody else can see like a child oh, it's great yeah very great we do have fantastic forecasting finally yeah that kind of can't believe that shit either yeah, it, 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 it's interesting, right? Because they're they're older, which which I'm happy with because uh, I, I feel like we're not going to have to have like the biggest build up to the Fantastic Four. It's going to be able to be um, you know, pretty well established like early on, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm stoked. I uh, I say I'm looking up because I, I wanted to remember uh, the the guy I'm most excited for, but the uh, even Moss Bacharach mm-hmm. or Bacharach or whatever, the guy from the bear is playing. I thought, uh, you know, I, 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 I watched a breakdown of the cast and when uh, they mentioned, oh, the guy's on the bear. I'm like, oh, that's the show that Tyler likes. Dog, watch the bear. It's good. <laughs> I did. Yeah, we won some awards. I yeah. You should watch the bear at least in preparation to see this to appreciate. Well, you've seen him before because he's in he's in the first season of The Punisher. Mm hmm. He's his uh his like tech guy, yeah. In the first season of Punisher, but he's really spreads his fucking wings in the bear. He is a great actor. Yeah. So, so Fantastic Four um is gonna be awesome. But since the last time we did a podcast, obviously Jonathan Majors, uh, you know, found guilty. We don't have to go yeah. into all that. I don't really want to go into all that. But uh, obviously. Uh, King is just like this big character in question. There's like that mm-hmm. report that the uh, uh, Avengers five, they're taking the King dynasty out of the name. So they're trying to do like this big pivot, um, which is like just very interesting because it's just like, like now, right. We're at this fork in the road. Now we went down the path where Disney isn't with Jonathan majors anymore. So now I'm always going to wonder, Oh, like what would have been like if, uh, you know, King isn't basically getting erased or, you know, kind of um, minimalize. We'll um, be finding this out for years. I think. Yeah. We'll be finding out. We'll be finding out leaked scripts 10 years from now. Yeah, of who's what, of where the MCU would have been the, the director of quantum mania. What's his name? Jeff, Jeff. Um, I can't think was it the same guy who did the other ant man's. I don't think so. Maybe. I'm, I'm, I'm really bad when it comes to directors and actors and actresses. But the guy who, who did Quantumania, he was supposed to direct Avengers 5, but... Pey- Peyton Reed. He's the guy who directed the other ones. No, no. I thought it was Jeff. Am mm-hmm. I tripping? Quantumania director, Peyton Reed. Or, or is he the screenwriter? Oh, maybe. What, what, what's the screenwriter's name? I'm sorry. Uh, let me... Uh, because he like put it in like his like Twitter bio and stuff. It was just like fuck me, I can't I can't scroll. He's like I wrote. Um, let's see, uh, what's his name? Like Jeff, uh, yeah, Jeff Loveness. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah. So he was supposed to write uh, Avengers five, but then he got pulled because of the performance of Quantum Mania, which which sucks because they're like you know they're I, I feel like they're trying to like kind of put out this narrative like oh it was because of king but it's because of king but no it, like quantum medium you know it, it, first of all it's not a, like a bad movie like I, I, i'd watch it again but like the, the the fact that they're trying to just put all this blame on king i just don't like that the thing that i think though they're in the perfect situation to pivot right now yeah well they have to they, could, they well but 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 they could they could logically close the door on king right now yes I've... Because with Loki season two and Quantum Mania, like you have to ignore the post-credit season of, of Quantum Mania now, um, 
but you can logically close the door on Kang and just think that the TVA will keep him subdued forever now. Mm -hmm. And that problem is actually solved and done for. Because the problem with Kang also, which I guess would have been the benefit as well, um, (laughs) the problem with Kang would have also been the benefit which also would have applied so well to real life, especially going back to our discussion about Tucker Carlson and Vladimir Putin of keeping the forever boogeyman. Ken could have stayed a forever boogeyman for Marvel because even if you do deal with him, there's always this opportunity that he could come back again. Mm -hmm. But if we're just going to wave logic. We're going to wave a logic wand and say, well, in Loki season two, Loki and the TVA are now keeping Kang from ever coming back to power. Well, then we can move right along to a different villain. And just assume that either they're keeping him out of power or similar situations as to what happened in quantum mania are just happening to the other Kangs. And then we can breeze right on by. They luckily aren't halfway through a two-parter Avengers story with Kang Mm -hmm. in which they would need to pivot. I also saw like, uh, like there were people being floated to replace Kang. Yes. Um, Was the, was the movie that came during COVID? Um, What? There's a movie that came during COVID. The the guy who did Inception. Um, Um, uh, fucking, uh, Christopher Nolan. Yeah, what was that? What was the movie that, that he did during COVID? Tenant, are you talking about David, John David Washington? Yeah, he would. I mean, he would be the most logical choice. But I heard. Uh, did you ever watch uh, any of The Walking Dead at all? Unfortunately, did you watch Fear the Walking Dead? No, I didn't make it that far. No. Okay. Well, the the um, there was a an older black actor in uh, Fear the Walking Dead um, that I heard he was in because they were thinking they were like. Um, Kang doesn't have to be Jonathan, Jonathan Major. Major's age. Okay, he, like he doesn't have to be John. Uh, um, uh, Coleman Domingo, Coleman Domingo. That guy was apparently in in speculation as possibly somebody who could have played Kang, which uh would have been cool. I would I would have I would have totally I would have I would have because of because I think it wasn't fair a lot of what happened, and I don't want to get into it, but um. Because of uh, because of the circumstances, I wouldn't fucking be against a recast. I don't care. So, okay, I was just going to ask if you had the choice option A, recast and stick with King or option B, which seems to be what Disney is doing, you know, rush to Dr. Doom. I still don't think they're going to be rushing, especially if they if they, don't if, think they so? if they're able to, if they're able to do something with um, if they're able to do something with. Deadpool to further that okay that collision they're able to do something in Deadpool and yeah. if they if they had started planting seed if they start planting seeds with Deadpool and they speed up Fantastic Four we have four no okay, uh, five movies till the next Avengers so we have Deadpool Captain America Thunderbolts Fantastic Four and Blade that's the timeline right now. That's the timeline right now. So how? I don't know how they're going to do it. And I don't really care, honestly. I'll see whatever they do. But at the same time, you just named like some movies I actually am pretty excited to see. <laughs> no, I'm dude. The, the next five movies are going to be crazy. I'm very excited for the next Captain America movie. Yes, because I'm because the. The time the fact that I, they're bringing what's his face from Hulk back is awesome. Yeah, I, the, like when I was like super heavy into comics, like you know, I, I got to see Sam Wilson take over as Captain America. So I never thought I'd get to see this happen on the big screen. So the fact that we're gonna get that, and you know, I'm Tim curious Bl- about Tim the, Blake Nelson. Tim Blake Nelson. The fact that we were getting to see him come back is awesome. Yeah, and. It looks awesome. Just like the screenshots that I've seen, like, you know, like from like the set photos, like Captain America looks so sick. 
I'm stoked they're bringing that dude back. Uh, his his like tech guy is going to get to be Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. That made me so happy when I saw him. Or his Falcon, Falcon. Falcon. Or Falcon. Yeah, Falcon yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, not Hawkeye. Um, but the fact that he's going to be the new Falcon, that's so cool. Yeah, because, you know, he already made his appearance. So the fact that they're sticking with it, it's Dog, awesome. I still I, I do not care. Falcon the Winter Soldier was awesome. Yeah, dude. Well, <laughs> they had to make that that impression with Disney Plus. That was like pro- I, to this day is it still the highest budget Disney Plus? Is that is that the highest budget one still? I don't know. It seems like it. it looks like it. I feel like Andor would have maybe beat that, but maybe not. No, I'm, I'm talking about Marvel. Sorry, sorry. Oh, Marvel. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, but also so many of the other ones have been so much. I guess lower stakes. True. Yeah, because Captain America those ones, was more globe trotting. But in each episode, felt like a movie. Yeah, I really did. Yeah, I was just like, and I'm, I'm fucking, I'm stoked for Thunderbolts. I know some of those characters aren't your favorite, but I just, I, I, I really I, like John Walker. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I think U.S. Agent's cool. I'm, I'm ex- I think he's a tragic character. I, uh, I don't mind our new Black Widow, Florence Pugh. I'm fine with her. Um, and I don't, I didn't hate David Harbor as Red Guardian, dog. I know you were put off by him but i i, I just we could have got a cooler thunderbolts but i'm i'm, I'm not gonna hate who, it who else is thunderbolts that who who else is a thunderbolt that you would would have liked to see that isn't red well obviously he's, he's not even in the um uh you know like his character's there but like thunderbolt ross but he hasn't turned into red hulk yet he might well, okay, that's why I'm not writing off the, the 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 movie. I'm just not the most happy with the team, um, but I think it's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I feel like obviously for it to be like a movie and not a Disney Plus says a lot about it. Yeah, I think it's going to be cool. I uh, can say the fucking ghost being in it. I think is going to be cool. Yeah, and also I just. Julia Louis Dreyfus has been funny in all of her Marvel appearances so far, so I'm I'm excited for that. Yeah, it's crazy to see that we're getting a Fantastic Four film before, like an X Men film. Yeah, that is pretty nuts. But uh, I also I think just people I think people have been wanting a good Fantastic Four movie for the entirety of them making. Yeah, it's it's been rough. Favorite movies. So. <laughs> the last one was probably the best one so far, but the the one that got fucked up. Yeah, because I'm or maybe I'm just a huge fan of Miles Teller. I don't know. I like Miles Teller. I uh, I I would have liked to have seen that cast get a decent job, but like apparently, like um, Homegirl who played Sue Storm had like a terrible time with the director. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I watched something like about like the, the the shit that happened behind the scenes. And I guess that director, like he wanted somebody else for that role. Ah. And she got pushed into the role. That's weird. I like the studio or whatever. Yeah. And then he took it out on her. Yeah, that's, that's like, why he was forced to deal with her. He like was very cold and like dismissive and like uh, apparently like Miles Teller, like him and Miles Teller, who he got the job like he lobbied to get miles teller in the movie and they got in like a knockdown drag out argument um on set and like miles teller like told him the fuck off and told him he's being a fucking asshole i think stuck up for some of the other people who he was treating like shit yeah um, that guy was uh the director was slated to do one of the star wars like i think so yeah yeah but then when uh you know he like crashed out when fantastic Four came by disney was like yeah never mind we're gonna pull this guy we're gonna get somebody else (sighs) yeah dude the politics of hollywood shit just seems like way too much yeah but i'm just happy that marvel studio has like the rights to like all like almost everything right I mean, me too, dude. I just, I just want to see, the, I just want to see them be able to like take the the bumpers off while bowling and like really go for strikes or misses full force without like with full access to 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 either strike or fail on on their own merit rather than 
rather than being able to be like, oh, well, maybe it would have been better if we could have done this. And it's like, I, I hate that excuse. So let's take those excuses away and you just make a good movie and uh, and we won't and we won't then have to speculate on how it could have been better if you could have done this. Hmm. And speaking about speculation, the whole like Disney Plus is like in speculation. There's no release dates for anything like like 2024. We're supposed to get Agatha, the Darkhold Diaries. Mm -hmm. No, uh, no release date. Eyes of Wakanda, no release date, and your neighborhood friendly Spider Man, which is something else. Um, As a cartoon, right? Yeah. And then, you know, Daredevil, is it on? Is it off? It's just like. It's in production. Yeah. I, I saw a I'm set seeing photo. clips. Yeah. I saw a set photo with um, uh, Foggy and what the hell is the girl's name? I always forget. Karen. Yeah. Uh, she's a great actress. Um, but it's just like, okay, Deborah, Deborah, something I can't remember her last name um, from so, True Blood. Oh, she was in True Blood. Yeah, doc. She's great in True Blood. You should watch True Blood. I watched like a, a couple episodes. It was cool, but um, I, I think that was back when I was on my like, um, uh, what was the vampire movie? The big popular one. Uh, Team Twilight. Edward. Yeah, I was on my Twilight bag. Terrible bag. <laughs> 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 yeah true blood, true blood for me that is the superior vampire fiction for me it is the most uh i think it's the most um the most politically charged the most um like it's it's saying the most i think it's a it's a good like critique on a lot of different like things about uh like from race to religion to um, like bigotry towards like homosexuals and whatnot. I think they hit on a, they hit on a lot of different things in a way through using vampires that I think is really interesting. And the lore in the show is really awesome. And I think visually they pull a lot of it off. Okay, where like supernatural and shit like that. Like sometimes you're like, I'm clearly watching a CW show. Speaking of political stuff, the, I, I want to ask you this. Uh, obviously, we haven't talked about this before, but in April, there's an uh, you know A24 film coming out titled Civil War. It's being written and directed by Alex Garland. He wrote 28 Days Later, mm -hmm. Ex Machina. Have, are, are you familiar with this movie? Civil oh, War? Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen the trailers for it. Can we do a podcast? After we on watch Civil it. War, oh, I'm down. <laughs> okay, because I, I'm down. I, I actually think it's going to be pretty cool. It looks to me like it's so. Um, the I, I the one of the things I texted Joey Mora about it. Um, after after like the first time I saw the trailer, I was like, "Yo, have you seen the Civil War trailer yet?" And he was like, "No," but everybody I've heard talk about it has said this would suck ass if A24 wasn't making. <laughs> Um, which I think is apt. I think it, I think it might actually have like a correct take on what it would be like for there to be like a, a massive civil conflict in America, which wouldn't be like the last civil war. It would be like the Syrian civil war. Like we would end up with like multiple militias and sects throughout the country breaking out in massive violence. And there'd be a ton of casualties. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of innocent people will die and it will be all bad. And my hope is that there will be enough people who see this movie who have been fantasizing about um, getting together with their militia bros and going and killing all the Marxists and communists and trans, you know, people trying to indoctrinate their kids. And they will see a little bit of what that kind of violence would look like. And they might think about how much they're how how they are too big of pussies to pull the trigger that many times. Um, they may have the guts to pull the trigger one day, uh -huh. but they will not have the guts to pull the trigger that many days in a row. And that's why all these people who do these lone fucking attacks kill themselves afterwards. Um, it's because they aren't they are not man enough 
I say man enough because they're all men. They're always men. Mm -hmm. They're not man enough to deal with the repercussions of that type of violence. Um, They just fantasize about it on their Reddit, 4chan, uh, Telegram channels, whatever the fuck, like all, all the live long day and get so excited when some kid fucking decapitates his dad. And actually, apparently a lot of them got really upset about that and thought it was made up. I haven't heard Um, about that. (laughs) Oh, you boy. didn't hear about the kid who decapitated his dad? No, that's crazy. I, I I'm some really guy, into the gory stuff. Some guy like like early 30s, like he decapitated his dad, or he shot his dad in the head and then cut off his head and then made like a, a like a video about like how everybody should kill an, a government employee. Um and like just like schizophrenic shit. Yeah, and just go it's, listen it's to Romalo. <laughs> it's pretty fucking nuts. <laughs> Um, but yeah, all these people are fucking pussies. And my hope is that they'll see that movie and realize they're just, they're just pussies. And maybe they should just like be thankful that like, we're not in a civil war. Yeah. Be thankful. We're not in a civil war and that they get to have their guns and go and shoot them on the weekends and like have their toys. Just be thankful that they get to have their toys and, and, and also just admit their toys. Okay. Admit that the AR 15 is a toy. (laughs) Well, I'm looking forward to that. I'm glad you're down because that I I feel like that's right up our alley. No, I'm excited for it. I think uh, I think the cast is cool too. Kirsten Dunst, I I yeah. like her. I'm <laughs> dude. Ever since uh, Bring It On, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Straight up, great fucking flick. Um, but yeah, I uh, yeah, I'm down. Okay. Uh, next month, LDB. Should we, should we talk LDB about that next month? Yeah. You'll be right here, <laughs> which is crazy because <laughs> for, you know, for the past two years, I've been telling you, yeah, I'll go to LDB, but I'm, you know, it, it, it had fallen the same or like, like last year was like the week before Harker Pride weekend. And I was already like, mm-hmm. you know, committed to going to, to Philly. Um, but I told you, I was like, all right, this year, no matter what's going on, like I'm going to be there, uh, you know. Um, I have plane tickets. I'm going to be there. So if I'm not at LDB, it's because I'm dead or something because I, <laughs> I have plane tickets. You're supposed to pick me up from the airport. I'm I'm excited. I've never been to uh, Louisville. Uh, I've never been to LDB, obviously. So I'm excited to be able to experience it for the first time. Who are you most excited for? Band wise? Yeah. Two witnesses. Because I feel like they're, really? yeah. they're like a regional thing. I, I wish yes. they would get out. But, you know, the fact that I, you know, Jim Barron's been on the podcast, uh, you know, I just love the music. So the fact that I finally get to see it first time I get to see them is going to be, you know, uh, their hometown. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm excited. Dude, uh, it's it's going to be sick. There was holes put in a venue uh, the other day. Um, first show at the new Spinelli's and um their set put two holes in a wall, which is just fucking awesome. There's been fights at most of their shows recently. Too, so <laughs> oh, yeah, well, we'll I, 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 I want to be in zero fights. I just want to enjoy the set. But yeah, I, I'm just excited to to finally get to see them live because I think they're they're an awesome band. But, you know, obviously yeah. well, there's a long list of great bands playing uh, the fest. So i uh, excited for the fest but yeah I, if i had to pick one band that I, i'm excited because i've seen uh you know like like the majority of the most fest, of everybody um so that, that's like one band that i haven't seen yet that i'm like all right this is this is gonna be cool yeah i'm trying to think i'm i'm going through the the thing i would be the most excited for too are probably the bands i haven't seen i haven't seen witness chamber yet so i'm kind of, i'm pretty stoked to see them mm-hmm. i just got to see scarab so i got them knocked off my list but so sick I'm very excited to see Scarab again. <laughs> Dude. They're fucking awesome. They did a four punch cover that's in a, Queen. That's awesome. Yeah. They did no exceptions. It was awesome. I I was I was so shocked and just singing along. And then that breakdown hit and boy, I was fucking moshing. It was cool. Um I'm also I'm I'm stoked to see Heads Will Roll. I think that's Heads Will Roll, Big Boy. Those mm-hmm. are the two. I think I think Heads Are Roll and Big Boy are the two bands playing the Fest Fest that I haven't gotten to see. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking yeah. at the lineup. Yeah. Two Witnesses and then uh, Balmore is high up there too. So I haven't seen Balmore yet. You haven't seen Balmore yet? Yeah. I'm a. Uh, it's going to be fun, man. It's going to be cool. Hopefully I don't get hurt. <laughs> yeah. What am I supposed to do if you get hurt? Do I? I don't know. 
Hang out with Ashton. <laughs> okay. If well. I'm in the hospital, you can just just catch a ride home with Ashton. All right. And I I appreciate um you know and I'm stoked too that I get to go there and you know I'm uh staying with you get get to experience the fest with you so. Yeah, I wish you could hang out for a couple extra days and actually see Louisville a little because you're only going to see a small corner of it for with with the how long of the fucking days of the fest they're going to be. Yeah. All right. Well, we got to make the most of my first morning there because I feel like that's going to be one of those times where like I don't really know. I don't have anything planned. I don't know if you have anything planned. Um, For for Thursday. Yeah. Thursday morning. Yes. Oh, no. I'll show you around some shit Thursday. We'll have to make it to the show a little early because uh, I'll have to set up shit uh, merch wise at the show. But um, we'll definitely. Damn. Yeah. That could be the day I take you to Vincenzo's. Okay. <laughs> we may not eat there, but I'll at least show it to you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. For, for, for everyone who's, who's curious, I, I, I like Jack Harlow. He raps about Vincenzo's. And, you know, I never thought I would make it out there. So the fact that I am, I'm like, All right, I just want to go. So I've been bugging Tyler about Vincenzo's for a while. So it's fine, dog. <laughs> okay. And uh, there's a you're playing in a new band. Can we talk about that? Is that still happening? Yeah, we can. I I I I kind of talked about it a little bit because I got to do Axe to Grind uh, um, the other day when I was in New York. Okay, shout out um, Axe to Grind. Yeah, shout out Axe to Grind. It was fun. Um, and I've been trying to not because because I I guess I I'll sh- I'll share it with you because you're my dog and we've got the history we've got. But I've been trying to not go as wide with talking about my new band because I'm doing something so different in it vocally that I was almost kind of hoping like people could hear it and get like the experience without like oh that's the know, it, knowing it's me yeah okay no I, I, I get that um, but I will be posting about it so I think there will be enough people who might just like recognize or realize by certain things in the way some things are said or the way the lyrics are written, that it's me. But uh, the band opening the pre-show is Walk Alone, and that's my my new band. And uh, it sounds different than other stuff I've done. Even though I've done this band before, uh, 10, 12 years ago, <laughs> okay, this, so- band was, this band was going concurrently to another mistake for like a few months. Um, but... Uh, we just got our final mix back and it should be the demo should be dropping next week. Okay. So probably around the time this podcast drops. So yeah, by the time so, they get to uh, this part of the podcast, they might be already spinning the new band. Yeah. So, so if you're, if you're listening to this and you've listened this far, then you can know that I am in walk along. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, check it out. I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. It might be the, it, I might be the most happy with, this recording than any other recording I've ever been a part of. Oh, wow. That's across all bands. Yeah, across all bands. I really like it. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, don't want to go too deep into it because it's not out yet, but um, I'm sure uh, maybe. uh, Okay, here's another spoiler. We're going to hopefully film a a podcast side by side when I'm there. That's the plan. Yes. So maybe we can talk about it then. Yes, we can definitely talk about it then. Okay. And uh, maybe we'll wait till after that to talk about Echo because I don't want to just be clogging up the Jamie York podcast timeline for <laughs> maybe you know, we should spread some of these out because we only got only only got a few Marvel movies to talk about this year or yeah. Marvel properties to talk about this year. You know, people recognize you as the most repeated guests in the podcast history. at this point i have to be <laughs> no I you know, are you are i know dan schultz had had me for a while and i know some of your mma buddies were were up there a little bit too but yeah. at this point it's got to be me yeah but 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 it's fun because people you know it, it it's nice when um, i'm out and i run into certain people and they're just like you know that mcu stuff is is fun and i'm like thank you i, I you know because i only do it here right all the other podcasts yeah. i do um i i don't really talk about it um uh, with other people but it's fun when people want to talk about it with me because of what you and i do that's awesome 
I'm, awesome. I'm glad anybody enjoys this because it, it definitely enriches the experience for me. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time. Uh, you know, obviously th these are always fun. Well, you and I will be back. Um, uh, you know, sometime late March, I'll be in, in, in Louisville. It'll be a great time. Uh, before we go, is there anything else you would like to say? I don't know, man. I, I, I've been having such a fucking blast lately. Just, trying to spend as much time as I can with people involved in hardcore that, uh, that feel the way I do about shit. And, uh, I don't know. Hanging out in New York was awesome. Shout out Chad Letty, perfect world, Brian Wallace, uh, from perfect world who, uh, I do hardcore troubadour with for putting me up, um, for a couple of days and letting me wander around New York city, um, without, uh, any, uh, any smart devices really to speak of uh it was cool and i um i don't know i just uh i appreciate everybody in inclination who facilitates my ability to go and play shows because god knows i couldn't do any of this shit on my own all right well so yeah enjoy the, hardcore enjoy hardcore go support the label ldb uh, yeah, if you on, want to, that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, go 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 support the label. But uh, Tyler, this is always a great time. I, I appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>